It's day seven of the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games, and we have a packed schedule as we hand out the final medals in the Paris Snowboard Competition at Beijing 2022. Temperatures have been on the up, so it's time to make the most of the snow. The blue skies have gone, and it's looking a little gray and overcast out there. Yeah, and that's the situation when you have that gray light, you have problems with the definition. You can see the blue lines set up on the bank stall, of course. That's gonna help all the riders to be able to anticipate each of the lines as they're going down there to try and find the best way down and the fastest way down. You've got to see the line, you've got to be the line. <laughs> Indeed you do. And you think back 37 years ago, the first bank slalom course ever took place in the USA. And here we are 37 years later, right here in the slopes of John Jacow here in Genting Snow Park. Awesome and to get this thing going. Fantastic atmosphere as well. And lots of happy faces from the Chinese fans. It's been a brilliant snowboard competition for the host nation so far. And waxing could be key. We're seeing the wax technicians at work at the top of the slope. Yeah, you can see the wax tech area right here that we are looking at, and this is where it all goes down. And when you talk about temperatures being a little bit on the warmer side, you got to be careful. You got to pick the right type of wax for the conditions. Four gold medals on grab, uh, up for grabs, and it will be individual runs, two chances to clock the fastest time, two shots at Olympic. Uh, Paralympic immortality. The women's bank slalom SBLL2 will get us underway. And we've got some big names. Well, some changes from uh, four years ago. There was three runs to get the fastest run, but today only two. So it really doesn't leave you much room for a mistake out there. Brittany Curry will be the ninth down. She was a silver medalist in Pyeongchang four years ago. Lisa Bunshalten will be at the top of that start list going second into the course. 54 gates, 21 turns. Now the temperatures, of course, have changed a little bit, warming things up. That will make the slow just a little bit slower. So if you do have that mistake out there, it's gonna be really tough to put in that fast time. So you really wanna be mistake-free from top to bottom. How does it feel to be at the top? preparing for your Olympic, uh, your Paralympic competition. See the riders going through their pre-rituals now before they get going. When you talk about wax being so important out there. There's different temperatures wax you use for dip different temperatures on the snow. So being that it is a little bit warmer, you gotta make the right choice. So that's gonna be very important. And you're gonna see some riders a lot faster than others, maybe making the right choice when it comes to the wax. Team Germany there, we've got Matthias Keller and uh, teammate Manuel Ness, they're newcomers pretty much to the parable, para snowboarding scene, Team Germany. So the vertical drop, 121 meters. We start at 2,001 meters, the altitude. The course is 540 meters long and it is 54 gates to get through, 21 turns, even sided on those steep banks. It will be testing. The, sk the snow was looking like whipped cream in the early stages of competition at Beijing 2022. It's looking a little bit grubby now, but the snowboarding will be beautiful. We're gonna see some fantastic riding. And the clock is ticking down, 30 seconds before Lisa Dion of the Netherlands gets this competition underway, wearing number one. 32 years old, she knows what it feels like to stand on a podium at a Paralympic Winter Games. In form coming into this competition, Lisa de Jong of Canada. So in form coming into the Paralympic Winter Games, her international debut this season. Plenty of support as she takes that first, those first two bends. How fast will this course be? Well, we are going to find out because this will set the pace for the rest of the competitors. They start with those two rollers and then this gets right to work in the banks. And what you want to do on the banks is you want to stay solid on your edges through the turns. You want to get flat before you go back into the next turn to keep that speed going. You really want to find that, that fast line down. Now, the only issue here, too, 
is the more riders come down this course, it's going to get worked. That means the grooves are going to develop, and it's going to be tougher to put those fast times in. So if you're ever going to get a good fast time, it's probably better that you try to get it early in the run. As you can see, the clock ticking here for Lisa de Jong in her Paralympic debut. Already silver, as you said, from Snowboard Cross has done that. And let's see if she can back it up. She airs into that little section, back on those edges. She is a regular foot rider, meaning she rides with that left foot forward. Now she makes it towards the bottoms, and this is where she'll finish up for this, and then she'll have three rollers to go through right at the bottom and then to cross the finish line. Here's the final turn on her heel edge. Now she's going to point it, the three roller section, and this will be the time to beat a 121-62 for Lisa Dion. Mum of two, Lisa Dion of Canada gets the LLB. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Hi, Bailey. Hi, Allison. Hello, LLB2 competition underway. Lisa von Schaffen of the Netherlands. What can she do? Two runs down this course, both vitally important because they're going for gold from the start. So we pick her up, and she is 1.40 up on the young now so she's got a faster time she has to keep it together nice and solid here towards the bottom love the edge work that's it so important here you don't want to get too high on the banks because that will cost you some time look at how she wraps around that's a thing of beauty right there looking really good on the toe edge pointing it through the rollers look at the time she's going to check in a 119.02 very good time right there for Bouchotten so important to get a good time on the board. Just two chances of Paralympic immortality. And Schatten takes the lead. Two-time Paralympic the kid medalist. Takes to the board. Takes to the start gate. Zheng Yanghao, known as the kid, the youngest on the Chinese team. And from the People's Republic of China, 17 years old. Joined her down here. Towards the lower part of the course, airs it out. Nice. Got a little sketchy on that turn. Let's see where she's at. She's looking to try and beat it. 119.02. That's the number she's trying to beat. Let's see if she can get in touch with that one. Here we go. 112 for her in counting. Stay low. Here's the roller section. Can she do it? Check the time here. Oh, 0.14 off, but puts her into that second spot. Very respectable time for the kid. Well, the Chinese athletes are very familiar with the course at Zhang Jikou. Back up the hill for that second run. Sandrine Hamill of Canada. Boxing part of her routine, probably helps with her drumming as well. One of her hobbies. And she's going to be looking to just 24-year-old here. Now towards the lower section here, working it. Look at the 54.92. That's the time, the split time she's trying to do. She's going to be out of touch with that. 2.82 behind. Let's see what she can do to try and make up some time here towards the bottom. Getting a little washy with those edges. Really want to stay in that groove, almost like a Euro carve, and just stay nice and tight. Now she's going to point it across the line. She's going to be well back. Where is that going to put her? In the fourth spot. So she'll have another run to see if she can get into that top three right now in fourth. Well, Shelton of the Netherlands leads the way from Geng of China. Diong of Canada in the bronze medal position. Four riders have taken to the course. Hunyanjia. Part of this very successful Chinese program. Very familiar with the conditions on the hill. And here she is now towards the little section there where you have that little air. You want to land on the transition. You don't want to land on the knuckle because that costs you time as well. Let's see who can do here. You see the time ticking away, trying to beat that 119.02. That is the official time to beat to get you into a podium position or get you into that number one spot. Here she goes, going to pop through the rollers. Look at this time right here, and she's going to get in the number one spot. When Shotton's going to be bumped in the number two spot. Nicely done. Well, that takes her off her feet. She'll be happy about that. Who of China moves into the gold medal position? 
Five riders down the course in the women's bank slalom, SB LL2, Renske van Beek. She has been off the podium at the previous Paralympics, fourth place. She's hoping to move up a step or two. Two-time Paralympian now on course, Renske van Beek from the Netherlands, 32 years old, a skateboarder. She uses skateboarding to help her stay in tune for snowboarding. Those two sports work really good together, so if you don't have the snow, you need to train on the skate. And there she goes here, staying low on the banks. That's important to do. You want to flatten in the straightaways. And you get back on the edges. She's going to be outside of that top time. Let's see where she drops into. She'll go into the sixth place. 5-2-1 back of the top time. So it's still Hu of China in the gold medal position. Bun Shouten in silver. Geng of China in third. Reska van Beek will have another run to try and trouble the podium. This is Cecile Hernandez of France. Motivational speaker, she also rides BMX, carries her three Paralympic Winter Games medals with her for inspiration. She is the gold medal winner from Snowboard Cross. Let's see if she can do something here too as well, trying to battle who's time. Now she's gonna be off that, it looks like. Yeah, 1.58 back for the veteran, Cecile Hernandez. Gold in Snowboard Cross. Silver and Bank Slalom and Panic Chain and bronze in Snowboard Cross and Panic Chain. So she's a three time Olympic medalist on course. And she's trying to find her way into the top three. Needs to be below the 120 mark. Look at this. Look at this right here. She's going to check in. Oh, top five, fourth place. Phil Hernandez, she'll have some work to do to try and get into that top three. Just having a little think, a little shake of the head. Brenna Huckabee is in the start gate for the USA. Her two daughters will be cheering her, her on back home. She's officially a member of the Rad Mom Club. As she is making her way down this course. Bronze in snowboard cross here in Beijing. So she's already got one Paralympic medal. Also a couple of golds from Peyong Chang. So a three-time Paralympic medalist. And Brenna Huckabee representing the USA. I like the turns here. Looking very solid. Keeping it low. You don't want tail wash. When you start seeing that tail of the board kind of just wash out a little bit. That costs you time. You want to stay in that edge work. This looks good. Through the roller section. What's it going to be? Huckabee into Ooh. number two right there. 0 .08 off the top time. Fractions of seconds. That's something to target on the second run. Huckabee moves into second position ahead of Munchalton. Here's our silver medalist from Pyeongchang 2018, Brittany Curry of the USA. Gold taken then by Bibian Mental Spee, who passed away in 2021. Fifth in snowboard cross here in Beijing. So very respectable finish there. But she's looking for some hardware. Like you said, that silver medal in Bank Slalom and Pang Chang. It was on the podium. A different course, much different here, a better course field than what we saw in Pang Chang. Steve Morrison designed this, the Canadian. Made it more rippable to his quote, giving the athletes their opportunity to perform at their very best. And uh, Brittany Curry trying to see what she can do here. Looks like she had some trouble, as you can see, that time. Yep, and that's what we were talking about. When you make a mistake on this course, it is so hard to make it up because it's not a very fast course. So you need to be very mistake three, free. And she obviously must have had a mistake at some point down this run with that clock at 137 and counting. And Brittany Curry making her way down to the finish area. This will be her last toe edge turn around this one. And she'll go across the rollers. And she's gonna have one more run to get something mistake free. Well back, 33 seconds and some change. Two runs for our bank slalom riders. Fastest run wins. Curry will go again. Romy Shop of Switzerland, encouraged by her husband to take up para snowboarding. She trains up to 20 hours a week, and this is the main stage she has been training for. Paralympic debut for her 10th in snowboard cross here in Beijing. Good style there. Got a little washed on that tail. 
but nice and low, staying over your binding, staying over your board, and keeping those knees bent. Your Euro carve solid, you don't want wash, that looks good right there. See the turns, very fluid. Let's see what this can translate for her. Fourth in Lillehammer, and eighth in the bank slalom in Lillehammer. So she's gonna be just under five seconds back in that 4.88 time. Rami, make it her way down here. Here is the last two turns. See the edge work on the heel. Carving it nicely onto the toe edge. Slashing it around. And then across the rollers here. Try to pump through the rollers, get a little extra speed. And she'll go into the top 10. 125.08. Who of China still leads the way. Ten riders have completed the course. Four to come. Li Tiang. Tiang of China, 18 years old. Can she rip a good time out here? Uh, time she's looking to try and get below is that fellow teammate, the 118.05 for Tiang Tiang. Let's watch the edge work here. Good speed, staying nice and low, the blue line. Great course. Definitely one of the best in the three installments. The Paralympic Winter Games as she makes her way down. And check the time here. She's going to pop through the rollers. Is she in the top three? In the third spot. China one and three right now. Li Tiang Tiang. Just splitting Huckabee and Bunshauten. So no Caitlin Madri. She does not start. We move on to Wang Jingyu of China. Also trained in para swimming and volleyball. Switched to snowboarding a couple of years ago. Fancied her chances on home snow. Wang Jingyu, 11th in snowboard cross. Paralympic debut for her. With China one and China three right now, and actually five as well. So three Chinese representing in the top five. People's Republic of China, here we go. And look at this time, this could be another good time. Points it across, gets into the third spot. So now you have four representing China in the top six right now. That's impressive, who of China? The 19 year old is leading the way, Brenna Huckabee in the silver medal position after the first rung. Then it's Wang Li of China in fourth. So we have Sadige Ruzbe of Iran. Qualified in Pyeongchang 2018. Her husband encouraged her to ride. We're hoping that she's going to be able to improve on her performance from four years ago. But there's a lot to be said about inclusion for a female athlete from the Islamic Republic of Iran. She's already stepped it up from four years ago. She had trouble getting down the course four years ago, and she's worked on her skills, and her edge work has definitely improved in four years, and that's what it takes. You just have to keep your nose to the grindstone, so to speak, and just work on your edge work, and she's been working hard to be able to come down and, and try to put in just a decent time. One of the two of the first snowboarders to represent Iran. Has been competed in skiing with five consecutive Olympic Winter Games, and she's got to stay around the gates. Now, that's the thing. If you go below the gate, then you get disqualified. So she wants this time to count, especially when you only have two chances to put that time down. Started riding back in 2016. And she's going to have a little trouble here, but still above the gate. And this we talk about it being a little bit slower. The temperatures of the snow have definitely heated up over the few over the last week or so. And that makes it tough. Now this course, if it was a colder and the would snow would be a little bit harder, it'd be a little faster. But because of the temperatures, it makes it ever so difficult if you have a problem out there to keep that speed going. And Sedega is coming down here. Put a little speed check in there, not to go too fast. And miss the gate. Drops in on the step down. 
Banks. He's going to just keep working at it all the way to the bottom here. Started competing back in 2016. Made her debut in Pyeongchang. Is a officially a two-time Paralympian. Let's go Rose back. From Iran. 39 years old. And the improvement she's made over the four years. It's just it's nice to see this in Paralympic competition. She had trouble going from edge to edge and she would do what we call a falling leaf approach where you don't commit to one side but in four years she's really worked on it and you can see that has paid off yeah it's not going to challenge the top times but very respectable and the crowd will go wild here we go setting a road back she's going to cross representing iran and sometimes it's not about the time Baron de Coubertin said it's not about beating your opponents, but it's about the way you fight. And a battling performance there by the Iranian. So the first run is completed, and who of China leads Brenna Huckabee of the USA. So China 1-3-4-1 is in fourth place with Li Tiang Tiang. Lisa von Schalten. Desperate to try and claim that elusive gold medal, though, is out of the standings at the moment. Fifth, but they will go again. The fastest run will count. So if the course slows up, it could be tricky for our Paralympians to improve on their times. Seventeen names on the start list for the men's bank slalom. SBUL, that's upper limb impairment. Nine different NPCs are represented. Mike Miner of the USA is the 2018 champion. He will be competing and defending his Paris snowboard crown. And we see the slip crew coming in. They bring the slip crew in to try to get rid of some of the grooves that developed. And, and that's what the, you see right here. They'll go down, try to clean it up a little bit for the rest of the riders. We get to listen in on the countdown. Those nerves you could have on the start line. James Barnes Miller of Great Britain with his coach. It's good to see him bring out that slip crew to go down there because you can see him. This is a great shot of them coming down. And what they're doing is they go into what they call a snow plow where you put the tips of your skis together and that pushes the grooves out and just smooths the course out a little bit. And this is going to be important because of the warmer temperatures. You need to have that slip crew to come down and just clean things up for the rest of the riders. And if they do this throughout the day, that will help with those times too as well. Course designed and built by Stephen Morrison. He was one of the forerunners as well going down the course just to check all the timings and the gates were in right position earlier on. Uh, Bell Berghaus is the course setter. The Genting Snow Park course and in Jung Jiko and the slip crew as they go down there gives us a real chance to see what a lovely undulating rhythmic course this is and if you get your rhythm right the opportunity to find the time see the line be the line it's all there to be taken all the way to the top of the podium well steve morrison said uh, the, the, my favorite quote from steve morrison is this court course is more rippable and a little bit colder you'd get a little bit more of that but it is still the best course in bank slalom so far the Paralympic Games. We are ready. High fives all round from James Barnes Miller, 32 years old from Great Britain. Loves a bit of skateboarding, cycling is also a bit of weightlifting. Building the arms can really help you drop into the course with maximum attack. His teammate Owen Pick encouraged him to take up the sport. And what goes through your mind when you're standing, waiting for that clock to count down at a Paralympic Winter Games, something you've trained for in good weather and bad. And now it's underway over the rollers, carving into that first turn, lovely and low through that position. We'll get to see him come 
a long way down through this course. Now he was third out there in the bank slalom at the World Cup and Willie Hammer. Got on the podium there, then was second in snowboard cross. And that was earlier this season. So trying to capitalize on that momentum. And a very solid showing out here in Beijing. A fifth place finish for him in snowboard cross. That is very solid. So James Barnes Miller, JBM, they like to call him, is gonna work his way down. And I like that edge work right there. Heel to toe, heel to toe. Stay nice and low around those blue lines. Slip crew doing an amazing job. You see those grooves kind of getting rid of them. Perfect on the transition. You want to do that on that step down. You want to clear that and land on the down transition. And by doing that, it keeps your speed going. Now, if you land too short, that's called the knuckle. And you don't want to land on the knuckle because that will cost you some time. Great turns here for JBM. Here we go, pointing it across the roller. JBM, what's the time going to be? That's going to be a 112.39 for James Barnes Miller. We have our time to beat in the men's SBUL classification. In the final day of Paris Snowboard at Beijing 2022. Mike Miner, he knows a thing or two about standing on the top step of a Paralympic Games <laughs> podium. <laughs> Preloading on the rollers, <laughs> I love it. That's a good technique right there. Let's see if that works for Magic Mike Miner, the 31-year-old, two-time Paralympian. He was gold in bank slalom and pound shanks. So you expect good things out of him. And he was bronze in snowboard cross. Ended up 11th in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. So that's not indicative of what he can put down. Now you give him a jump and he'll show you something. Let's see what he can do right now. He's trying to beat the 112-39 for JBM, drawing those lines out like an artist. Here we go, through the rollers, kind of preloading them. And look at the time, 112-16, Mike Miner in the gold medal position. And pushes Barnes Miller into silver. Look, that's the kind of competition we're going to be seeing. Fractions of a second count, and every run is a gold medal run, potentially. Riccardo Cardini of Italy. Just getting over the rollers, getting as much momentum out of the gate as possible. Here's Riccardo now. I love how he's just he's pointing it. You get those two arms out there. Point your shoulder and your board will follow. And he's doing just that. Ricardo Ardani doing it 12th in Stilbo Cross in Beijing. Paralympic debut for him. He knows what he has to do. It's got to be around the 112 mark to be able to challenge the top spots. A little chatter off that heel there, but he's staying solid. See how he pumps through it. Now it's off to the races. Point it. What's it going to be? And it kind of butters across, 0.73 back. Very respectable third place for Ricardo. Three riders have completed the course. Miner leads the way yes. from Barnes Miller. Cardani, whose motto says, Paris Snowboard is adrenaline. He had that pumping. This is Owani Masatake of Japan. Owani, nice on the heel edge there. We join him a little bit lower down on the course here. As time ticket on this one, 45 and counting. He knows the times to beat. Got to be in that 112 bracket. All top three are in the 112. Good through the, the step down jump. Nice onto the transition. Heel to toe. There you go, draw the lines. A little washy on that turn. Got to be careful there. We talk about washing, that's when your, your tail kind of washes out. Here's the time, he's going to pop to the last rollers. And he'll go into the four spot, two, two, three back. Mike Miner's time. Only started uh, para snowboarding in 2000. Oh, sorry, it started in 2001. So absolutely loves it. He's also a bit of a handy golfer. Jacopo Lucchini of Italy. Just not cleanly out of the start gate there. That will have cost him a fraction of a second or two. Let's see what that does for Jacopo here at sixth in snowboard cross. And trying to put things together here. Bank Slalom got a podium out there at the World Cup with his second place. So trying to continue off that momentum. A little outside there. Kind of fighting for speed. So he's lost some speed on course. But he's still there. Look at that, 0 .01. So very close to Miner. Got to be good here if you can take Miner out of that top spot. Let's see what he can do on the heel edge. 
to the toe. No wash there. Nice and low. Very good turn. Another good one. He's going to pump through. Let's see what that checks in for him. He does it. Lucchini into the number one spot with that time right there. What a performance from Jacopo Lucchini. Pushes Miner into the silver medal position after the first run. James Barnes Miller into bronze. Maxime Montagioni. He has been performing well coming into the Paralympic Winter Games in Beijing. He's also won medals in para taekwondo. Montagioni here in the lower section of this course. And he's one to watch in his Paralympic debut. Very strong earlier in the season. A couple of podiums, a couple of first place podiums. Look at the line he's drawing here. Toe edge, he's got some speed. This could challenge. Let's see what it's going to do. Maxime Montagioni now. Is he in touch? It looks like he is. Montagioni to the number one spot by 1.73 for the Frenchman. Could that be the gold medal run for Maxime Montagioni? Fastest wins, two runs in this bank slalom competition in Beijing 2022. He left that out on the course. Jiang Jiao, 19 years old from China. Proving to be a real force to be reckoned with in this competition in Jiang Jiao. Jiao was seventh in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. Nice on that step down to the transition. Some good turns. Toe edge. Not a lot of body movement. Keeping things nice and steady. Look at the time here. He's going to be in the number two spot. 1.62. Back from Montagioni. What a great time that was from the Frenchman. Lucchini into third position. The bronze medal position as things stands. Jung in silver. Montagioni in that gold medal position. Mico Moro of Italy takes his first attempt to beat the clock down the slopes here at the Genting Snow Park. Mirko on course now. 40 and counting here. You can really tell when they're putting together a solid run. Just watch how the body movement goes through heel to toe, toe edge there. And then down the step down, that was effortless. Puts that thing down very solid, lands on the transition down. Works his way down to the lower section here. Gonna keep it nice and tight. He's not gonna be challenged the top spot. But he is gonna come across that line in a top seven. 3.30 back from Mirko Moro. Stops the clock. Seventh quickest. You want to be, abo you wanna be above that 111.6. Wang Peng Yo of China has been focused on this competition since taking up snowboarding as part of the program imposed by the People's Republic of China. He's been working hard on the slopes. It's paid off already for him. That silver medal from Snowboard Cross so already won medal from these games. He'd sure like to make it too, but he's going to need to be fast. Maxime Montagioni has a 109.87. That's the time to beat. Just to get to a podium position, you've got to be better than Lucchini's 111.6. Down the step down, 0.05 up. So he's got a good one. He's got to stay mistake free to challenge that number one spot. Watch the edge work here. Onto the heel. Solid there. Oh, Euro carving it around there. This looks good. Check the time here. He's going to pop across. Can he do it? He's going to go into the number two spot. Very respectable. 110, 24 into second place. Into the silver medal position for Wang. And he looks smooth as silk, riding it down the course. Can he do better on the second run? Fastest wins. Two, race, uh, two runs down this course. Konstantinos Patrakis of Greece carried the flag at the opening ceremony. It's his second Winter Paralympic Games for his country. He's also the first Greek para snowboarder in the history of Greece. So he's got some accolades already on his shoulders. Uh, trying to see if he can battle a 111.49 just to get into a medal position. That's going to be tough because he is 793 back right now at the split. And that's 
A lot of time to make up as fast as these other competitors were going. As Yang in the third spot, Wang in the number two spot, Mattaglioni holding down the number one spot with a 109.87. Here we go, the last turn to the rollers. Petricus crossing with a 121.27, top 10. Thumbs up. Lee Chung Min of Korea. Another para Taekwondo athlete as well as he drops into the course, focused on the banks and the turns in the para snowboard competition in Beijing 2022. Chung Min on course, 14th in Beijing. 36 year old in his Paralympic debut here. He's a farmer. He's trying to farm some good lines down through this section here and see what he can put in. Let's see where this goes. Montagioni holding the fastest time at a 109.87. And he'll come across in a top 10's position in ninth. 4-1-4 back is going to be the time. Io Korea, Lee Chung Min. <laughs> Here's Michael Spivey of the USA, part of the Adaptive Action Sports Team, based out of Copper Mountain in the US. Surfer as well, likes to do this in the water as well as on the snow. Spivey now here at the 50 mark. He's going to be back in Montagioni's time. And he's going to be 5.8 back for Spivey, the two-time Paralympian. Right now, just trying to battle into the top three, you need a fast one. You need to be better than a 111.49 just to get into a medals position right now. And that's how things are shaping up. And he's going to be out of touch with that. But he's going to have one more run to see if he can get up into that top three. What's the time going to be? 11th. He'll be eight seconds and some change back in the 11th place for Spivey. What a run from Maxime Montagioni in the gold medal position, 0.37 quicker than Wang of China. Jiang is 1.62 off that fastest time set by the Frenchman. As we see, Ji Lijia of China, 19 years old, wants to become a snowboard coach when he's completed his Paralympic career, but that could last for some time. Well, he's already got the gold from snowboard cross here in Beijing in his Paralympic debut. They don't give out the goals unless you are one heck of a snowboarder. He's really putting one together here. Let's see what this looks like for him as he makes his way towards the bottom. Montagioni's time is the 109.87. Keep that in mind. Is he in touch with it? He's going to pop across the rollers. Ooh. And he is going to come into the number one spot by .01. Wow. A fraction of a second. 0 0.01. Puts Ji Lijia into the gold medal position at Beijing 2022. It's Zhu Yonggang of China next on the course. Watch out for him. Oh, looks like he might have had some trouble there because you can see him going slow through here. Not sure what happened in the upper part, but he's also the bronze medalist from uh, Snowboard Cross, so you expect good things out of him. But no surprise right there. Team China has been coming out and they've been. Got him for the podium every single time. You got three right now in the top four holding it down. And Montagioni, not a surprise that he put in a fast time. He's already had a couple of podiums this year in World Cup action, so you knew that he was going to be fast going into it. But we also know the People's Republic of China, they have brought their A game. Now, this won't be the run that he's looking for for Zhu Yang Gang. But once again, he'll have another opportunity in. You give him a good run top to bottom, and he can definitely put in a fast time. This won't be the one he's looking for. But look at, count it as a practice lap for Zhu Yang Gang. Styling it out down the bottom half of that course, it shows there is some speed there. Wants whatever issue at the top of the course slowed him up. He's got one more chance to go for gold. Matti Sairinen of Finland. Another skateboarder. These skills transition very well to the snowboard. Maddie right now, making his way down. Yeah, skateboarding, surfing, ever so important. Standing sideways, it is known by. And it does give you a little bit of 
both having those skills definitely helps you for snowboarding, being able to skate, being able to surf. And you can see a lot of these riders will use that to their advantage. So he'll be outside the top time still once again. Young Zee Howell in the fourth spot. And he's got a 111-49. Then you see the 110 happen with Wang Pingyao. He's in third. Maxime Montagioni second. Ji Li Jia in the number one spot. And he's not going to be able to challenge that for Matty. 14-12 off that top time. Sit down. Two riders to go in this men's bank slalom. SB UL first run, Park Su Yuk of Korea. Can he make his mark? The time to beat 109.86 by Ji Li Jia of China. And this will be the split time. It was a 47.82, so he's well back on that, down the step down. So not going to be able to challenge that top three. It's all about just using it as an opportunity. Look, if you're only going to get two runs on this course and you're out of time on that, that first one, well, then you try to figure out the ways. How can I pick up speed? What different lines can I approach this at for my second and final run? He's going to check it into 12th. 7.04 back at 116.9 for Park. Out of the bindings, that board uh, slightly narrower than yours, maybe. If you are a snowboarder, They're built for speed, these things. These are race boards that you see these competitors competing on. Some some of these racers, you'll see them wearing hard boots. Young Jiang, our penultimate rider on this course, has <laughs> always wanted to compete at the Paralympic Winter Games. His dream has come true. And he's representing the People's Republic of China on home turf in Zhangjiakou. He's drawing some nice lines here. This is a good section of the course we're getting a chance to look at here. Call that drawing the lines. Stay on your edge. Also, you can call it Euro carves if you want. But you stay on the edge. You don't want that tail to wash out. I'm going to draw into the next one. The way he pumps. Very good style. Down the step down, 1.42 back. Trying to challenge at least the top five here. The style is definitely on point. Might just need a little bit more speed to challenge the number one spot. Let's see how it plays out for him. Here we go to the rollers. He's going to pre-hop them, like pre-load over the rollers. Just outside the top five, into sixth. Four, Par four Paralympians from China taking up places in the top six. Ji Li Jia is in the gold medal position with Maxim Montagioni second. And then we have Wang of Peng Yao. You knew they would be strong in this category in the UL. They were quite strong in snowboard cross, so you knew they were going to be bringing the heat, and they're bringing the heat they are doing. One run complete, one run, a medal rush to come for the upper limb impaired athletes, but we will be moving on. You can see the crowd on hand, definitely having a good time. Representing in a big way. That's the blue uniform of the volunteers, and they've been outstanding at Beijing 2022. It's made everybody's life just that bit easier. The men's bank slalom, SBLL1. This is for athletes with an impairment where their ability is more restricted in the lower limbs. We've got some great names on the start list. Tyler Turner. Noah Elliott was the gold medalist in Pyeongchang 2018. Mike Schultz took silver, Bruno Bozjak in the bronze. But we start with Austria's Rene Eckert. He's visualizing the course, looking to get equal balance on that toe edge and that heel edge, find his rhythm, 
find the line and the quickest way down the hill. Is he ready to ride? It's like a bull in the start gate here. Clock starts when he goes past the timing starter over the rollers and into that first left-hander. Yeah, they have that timing almost. It's a stick that goes across, and once they break that and go through it, that's when their time officially starts. And let's see what this will be. This will be the time to beat. So it's interesting to see what the first rider down can do here. And he was 12th in snowboard cross, his Paralympic debut, and he's not riding that snowboard. Locksmith, Smith, the welder, loves to wakeboard, climbs, keep competed in hand cycling, but really found the knack for snowboarding and really loves just being on that board and the freedom it gives you. So this will be the time to beat here. Rene Eckhart from Austria, the 34-year-old. A seventh in snowboard cross earlier in the season, a tenth in bank slalom. With 16 competitors in this one. And one little mistake can cost you a whole lot of time out here. Trying to keep the board movement to a minimum. Nice line there. Drawing that heel edge. And Eckhart, the time to beat. He's going to be the 122 12. Your LL1 for the men. Hello, Mama. I think that translates in every language. <laughs> Rene Eckert, uh, the locksmith, unpicking that course. As we see Chris Voss of the Netherlands, known as the boss, absolutely desperately wants to take top honours and uh, honour his mentor, Bibian Mental Spee, who introduced him to this sport. Well, he's a guy who can definitely do it. The boss on course, fourth in snowboard cross. That's not a finish that he wanted to get. Look at the transition step down. So he lands perfect on the transition. That keeps the speed going. The, t the heel edge work is solid. Toe as well. This could be a really good time for the boss, the two-time Paralympian. Silver in snowboard cross from Panachang and fourth in bank slalom four years ago. And he will be well fastest by 10 seconds. A 112.08 for the boss. That's the time to beat. Sitting in gold medal position, but two riders have only completed the course. 24-year-old needs to wait before he goes again. Mihaita Papara of Romania is into the course at the Genting Snow Park. Mihaita now looking his way down. Now he knows what he needs to, to deal with, a 1.12 for the number one spot, that's for the gold medal. And then you have 10 seconds between number one and two. So there is a lot of room to nestle into that number two spot if you're not able to challenge the boss. And he's gonna be off Voss's pace, as you can see right here. He had a 49, so just about 10 seconds back, and that's what we we're talking about. So 10 seconds between Voss and Renia, Renia Eckhart in the number one and number two. So let's see what he can put down there. It should will definitely be in the top three, being that he's the third rider down. And he's trying to get above Eckhart with the 122.12 is what he's looking to do here. They pump through the rollers at the bottom. And he's going to go into third place for Mayada. He's pleased with that. He's a beekeeper. Speaks four languages, and I don't Woo! know if that includes the language of bees. Tyler Burdick of the USA inspired by watching Amy Purdy and says that was a game changer for him. He is, of course, another member of the Rad Dad Club, his wife Megan and daughter watching closely. Let's see what Tyler Burdick can do. Two-time Paralympian, eighth out there in Sochi and snowboard cross. At a podium earlier in the season in Lillehammer. But he is going to be off that pace too as well. He's going to be nine seconds, nine, one, nine back. So Tyler wants to make up some time here. It's not about that number one spot. It's about trying to stay in the top three. Now he's picked back up some speed. So he had a little rough in that midsection. 
but he's definitely stepped it up towards the bottom. Let's see where he goes. Trying to pump through it. And he'll be in that third spot, 11.45 back. Verdict into third. That would be enough to win him a bronze medal with the competition to finish right now, but there's still hey plenty to come. Marines. Our gold medalist from Pyeongchang 2018, Noah Elliott, just 24 years old. What can he do in Beijing? Can he defend the Paralympic crown? Well, that was an amazing appearance for him four years ago. She said the gold medal, the bank slam, also a bronze and snowboard cross in Pyeongchang. Two medals, one Paralympic game, that's solid. And you can tell, you see the style that he has off the heels, into the toes. And you, there's some heavy hitters still to come, but Tyler Turner has yet to take a run down this course, and he's already got a gold. So I don't think those number two and three will hold up, and Elliott will go into the number two spot. There you go, .98, very fast time, 113.06. For the American. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh. Sporting some much worked upon face furniture there. Looks like he's got that moustache waxed. But Mike Schultz has got his board waxed. He's looking to clock a quick time on his first run in this bank slalom. And Schultz has been very solid, too. He's got the silver medal in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. He also has a gold snowboard cross in Pyeongchang, a silver in Bank Slam, a three-time Paralympic medalist on course right now, Mike Schultz, the 40-year-old. And let's see what he can do here towards the bottom. Trying to get above a 122.12, which is the third place spot. That time was not hold up, I guarantee that. And here we go. What's it gonna be for Schultz? -y? He's gonna pump across. Schultz will go into third, a 113.64, sitting in the bronze medal position. So with six riders completing the course, Chris Voss sits in the gold medal position for the Netherlands. Noah Elliott in silver, Mike Schultz in bronze. Bruno Bozjak of Croatia won bronze four years ago. Yeah, Bruno is one of those guys who can put in a good time too as well. But once again, one little mistake on this course. And you can see Bruno going with the hard boots here. So really trying to use that edge work. You can see this same kind of setup. Where you can see our parallel giant slalom riders will go with the same hard boot setup. And the boots are elevated off the board, giving them more edge control. The bank slalom, there's an argument, is that better or is the soft boots better? Let's see what this does for Bajnak. He's gonna check in into fourth place. 3.70 back, a 115.78 for Bruno. Having a little think. Sending his love. Yu Kai Yang of China. Been boarding for five years now and absolutely loves extreme sports. Not extreme conditions today. The course is riding beautifully for those who are finding their rhythm. Yu Kai Yang, 10th in Silver Cross here in Beijing. The 22-year-old in his Paralympic debut. Just to get in that top three, you're looking at a 113.64 to get you into a medals position. Let's see how he does towards the bottom. Ooh, nice turn on the toe edge there. That really helped the speed across. And yes, he butters it across the finish line. And he goes into a bronze medal position with that run. Wearing it on his sleeve, Liu into the bronze medal position. But will this man displace him? Tyler Turner of Canada. Watch the style out of Tyler Turner here. Tyler Turner came out in, in his Paralympic debut, got gold in snowboard cross. He's definitely got the skills for racing. Does he have it for the bank slalom? He's gonna be 175 back, but that still could put him in a medal situation now as he makes his way towards the bottom here, to the toe edge, straight to the heel edge, a little high on that side there. Tyler Turner trying to put in the fast time, needs better than a 113.29 to get in the battle position. Here we go, check the time for Tyler Turner. Goes into fifth, 1.92. Turner's gonna need to be faster than that on the second run if he wants to challenge the top three. 
Less than two seconds separating the top five in the SBLL1 category. Kosuda Yunta will follow Osaguri Daichi of Japan. Definitely part of the Rad Dad Club. He's got three kids. Is also a golfer and is also finding his edge nicely at the top part of this course. And here we go, Aguri. He's going to be three seconds back. He can still make up some time there. Trying to battle for the top three here for Aguri. Fifth in snowboard cross here in Beijing, a two time Paralympian. Trying to put it together when it counts. Solid on the heel edge there. Nice and low on the toe edge. Across the rollers. How far back is he going to be? Sixth place. A 3 4 7 for Guri. Still, Chris Voss of the Netherlands started second in the gold medal position at the moment. Kosuda Yunta of Japan. Here we go with Kosuda now, seventh in Snowbrook Cross. Good finish for him there. Let's see how far back is he here. Voss is split time, 49.25. He's going to be a good four seconds back on that, but that could still put him in the top three. But you've got to be clean here at the bottom. Let's see if he can keep it clean. Solid toe edge work there. Staying low on the heel. Keeping the tail washed to a minimum. On the toe again. Back to the heel here. He's not going to beat Voss, but can he challenge the top three? No, eighth place, 4-2-4 four, four for Kosuda. Had to compete with a twisted ankle and a bit of a bump to the eye after training for the snowboard cross earlier. Great to see him on the start line. The bank slalom, Wu Zhongwei of China wants to be back on the podium. Zhang Wei on the toe edge there. Bronze from Snowboard Cross. Already won their Olympic medal from these games. Can he make it two? Well, here's this going to be the split. He's only 0.38 back, so he's definitely in a position to get a top three here. What's he going to challenge with? Can he challenge for the bronze? Can he challenge for the silver? Can he challenge for the gold? He'll need to make up some time in the lower section. Let's see what Wu can do here. Making his way down. Check the time here for Wu. He's pumping through the rollers, and he will go into the number one spot with that time, a 111.92. Solid snowboarding. What a performance for Wu of China. Good enough for gold? We'll have to wait and see. One more run to come. Tommy Taskinen of Finland. His philosophy is never give up. Really challenge the clock. Just speed checking into uh, the top half of this yeah, you got to think having speed checks you're not going to be able to challenge that top his paralympic debut just trying to put a run in get a little bit more comfortable with the course that's the key here like if you don't have it to be able to put it that top time you also need something to start with but you can see with those speed checks it's always tough to get that top time we competed in big air back in 2009 World Cup in Moscow there. And snowboarding for a long time. And here we go, the final two berms. It'll be oh, almost a little board slide. That's what we call a backside board slide by him right there, showing a little skate style from Tommy. Throwing little slashes in there. And Tommy's going to cross the line, the time in for him. So he'll be looking to try and beat a 149.32, but going to 13th place, and he's all smiles. Why not? You're riding a snowboard. On the biggest stage in the sports, three riders to go in the SSSB LL1 class. Christian Schmidt, part of Team Germany. Been riding since he was 12 years old. His son Max will be cheering him on back home in Germany. And he is going to be Schmidt's going to be 6.20 back. So let's see what he could do right now here towards the bottom, staying nice and low, keep the knees bent, little tail wash there. You don't want to do that. You don't want those speed checks. You just want to keep that board on edge. 
flat in the straight, back to the edge. And let's see what you might hear across the rollers. For the German rider, 123.6, top 10, very respectable. Slots into 10th in between Chris Suda in 9th and Austria's Rene Eckert in 11th. What a day for Andre Barbieri. Yeah. It's actually the anniversary of his amputation today, but also his daughter's birthday. Well, a little trouble for, for Andre Barbieri, now living in Santa Barbara, California. And he's just going to make his way down. He just has so much scope just to be out there on the snowboard. Also competes in parasurfing. Got the pleasure of seeing him in parasurfing back in 2019 in La Jolla. So the Brazilian calling California home. Nice good turn there. Backside 50-50 on the blue line, skateboard style. And right there, down the step down on the transition. And here we go to the heel edge for Barbieri. Oh, a nice little slash there, throwing some snow. And he's going to get turned in there and pointed across the line. Now he did have trouble, so he'll look to try and beat the 143.86. He'll go into 14th place. Andre Barbieri. Moves ahead of Tommy Tuskinen of Finland. And we turn our eyes back to the top of the course. Liu Yang of China, 21 years old. Hobbies include basketball, pool, and extreme sports. And again, part of this program, picking out talented athletes and training them up to compete for their country at this host Beijing 2022 games. And now we join him with 57, 58 in ticking. Liao Yang now, eighth in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. So very solid performance there in his Paralympic debut. Good turn there off the heel, pumping through the rollers here to finish things off. What's that gonna be? A top 10 finish, 4.88, a 116.8. He'll look to try and improve on that on a second run. Wu of China leads the way after the first run. 0.16 of a second ahead of Chris Voss of the Netherlands. Noah Elliott in third. Gold, silver, and bronze after the first run in the man, men's bank slalom, SBLL1. It's all to play for. On the second chase down the mountain. Grey skies after beautiful blue conditions for most of the competition at Beijing 2022. As we see the start list for the men's bank slalom SBLL2. The athletes with different colored visors coming through the snow helps them perceive any possible bumps or dips that might slow their progress, help them see the best line down the course, the racing line they want that could deliver them onto the podium. Goggles so important out there, except for the definition, you want to use something more of a clear lens or a yellow lens that makes the, the transitions stand out just a little bit better for you. So that, as well as wax, very important in what you choose for competition time. Narita Gumaru of uh, Japan won this four years ago. Ah, somebody's decorated themselves as a cat by the look of it. Some whiskers. For Tabuchi Shinji, special education teacher. His motto is to embrace challenges. And uh, I hope he didn't fall asleep and let somebody draw that on his face, but I suspect it's to impress his pupils back in Japan. First to drop in the men's SB LL2 bank slalom. The 40 year old gets his Paralympic career off and sliding. 
And so important to be the first rider down in your category because you, what you're trying to do is you're setting the time for the rest of the competitors. And you can hear how he talks to himself down. I want to listen to some of this. Each movement. Love to hear that, just getting really into it there on the toe edge. To the heel there, back to the toe. This will be the time to be 12th in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. Paralympic debut for him. He started para snowboarding in 2014. And choosing the hard boots as well. You can see that going for that parallel giant slalom look there. Really helps with the edge work. Can really hold the edge, Euro carve style. Tabuchi. There we go. On the toe. Tabuchi to the finish line. What's it going to be? This will be the time to beat. Butters across with a 114 8 2. That is the official time to beat here in your LL2 for the men. Well, he's the cat's whiskers, isn't he? <laughs> Owen Pick of Great Britain launches himself into the Genting Snow Park. 54 gates, 21 turns to complete. 540 meters. Like the work so far, Owen Pick has put together. Once again, you can really tell. Nice there. Step down to transition. 3.44 up on Tabuchi's time on the split. And you can tell that in the style. Effortless here. Toe to heel. Toe to heel. Not, not a lot of board chatter. Points it to the finish line. Going to pump through this. Little air there. 110.64. The time to beat for Owen Pick. Sitting in a gold medal situation. He worked really hard to claw back as many fractions of seconds as possible in his first run of two. Takes him into the gold medal position in the early stages of this as we see Zach Miller drop into the course. Miller time for the USA, 23 years old, 11th in snowboard cross here in Beijing. So a good, re good respectful finish there for him. But you know what he's looking for. He wants to come away with the medal. He's very good in bank slalom. Took a first place at Lillehammer already this season. You can tell by the style. Knees bent over the bindings. Not much board movement at all. Heel edge and then salt on the toe edge. You can see just the line he carves out. Here's Miller. What's it going to be? Miller, 3-5-3 three, three back from pick. He'll go in to the number two spot sitting in a silver. Okamoto Kaiji of Japan manages Osaka King, the snowboard facility back home. Is also author of the Snowboard High Speed Improvement Manual. And he will be looking to listen to his own advice as he makes his way down this course. Looking really good. They love the style. See, it just points the shoulder down the step down. Went the shoulder, board will follow. Nice low center of gravity. Looking to try and beat a 110.64. He's not going to be able to beat that, but then you have to look at the 114. Zach Miller is sitting in second. He's going to challenge that one. Okamoto sitting in the silver now with that 113.38. Sons Kato and Ayo will be proud of that. Wife Sumiko treating him on back in Japan as well. Four riders have completed the course. Evan Strong. Silver medalist from Beijing in, in from Pyeongchang four years ago, I should say. What can he do on the snow of Beijing 2022? Also gold in Sochi for the first year that snowboarding made it into the Paralympic Winter Games. It did not compete in snowboard cross, was saving it all. Wanted to focus just on this one, and he's only 0.42 back. So definitely in a medal position if he can hold the speed. The strong man doing his thing, three-time Paralympian. Let's see if he can hold it. Nice low line there on the toe edge. Keeping it low on the heel. Here we go. Evan Strong for the USA. Check the time here. He'll go into second. 110.74. Sitting in the silver for Strong. 
Owen Pick of Great Britain still leads the way from Evan Strong of the USA. Okamoto Kaiji of Japan in the bronze medal position. Keith Gable will be wanting to have something to say about this. He says he expresses himself through his snowboarding. Call him the Grizzly. The Grizzly on course right now. Seventh in snowboard cross here in Beijing. Let's see where he is at here with the split. You see how he follows the grooves. 48.55, he's gonna be just 0.48 back. So this could challenge the top three now. Okamoto in third with a 113.38. Strong in second with a 110.74. Pick in the number one spot with a 110.64. So very close between Pick and Strong. Let's see what he can do. Here comes the Grizzly. He's gonna cross the line, the time, and he'll go into third, 110.92. And you're seeing those 110s, one, two, and three right now. Is that Mama JP? Pops and Moose, love you guys. Just 0.28 between the top three. Ben Tudhope of Australia. What can he do here? Looking to add his second Paralympic Winter Games medal. Well, he can definitely do a lot. He's got the skills, as they say, to pay the bills. And Tud Hope on course out of Sydney. Bronze earlier in the week. Three-time Paralympian. A couple of podiums earlier in the season in Lillehammer. Let's see what he can do. Drawing some nice lines for the Aussie. Look at that heel edge turn. That's pretty good. Straight to toe, back to heel. Point it to the finish. Check the time. Tud Hope into fourth. A 112.02, 138. He'll have one more to try and crack the top three. Co-captain of the Australian delegation at just 22 years old. Only para snowboarder in the team means he's got an Olympic village to himself. And this is his other teammate from Team Unicorn, Matti Sur Hamari of Finland. Watch the it. sledgehammer. Yeah, watch out for the sledgehammer. 35 years old, gold in snowboard cross here in Beijing. This man has got gravity on his side. He can do it in a big way. Look at that. He's point four up, showing you that he can put a fast time in. Could he challenge Owen Pick for the top spot? He's looking to beat a 110 6 4 to get to the gold. Matty Sirhamari already a gold so far. To his last turn, Matty Sirhamari. Here we go. Matty Sirhamari, can he do it? He goes into the number one spot with a 109.98, sitting in the gold. Four years ago, Matty Sirhamari was the first Finn to finish first in para snowboarding at a Paralympic Winter Games. Can he make that a second ah. time? Zhu Jiang of China, 32 years old. Breakthrough games for the People's Republic of China here in Beijing. Another one of the talents spotted. Good lines, good lines too. You look at the toe edge, you look at the heel edge. Pre-hop on that step down to transition. That keeps your momentum going forward. That's what you're trying to do. Nice turn there. And he's gonna be outside that top three, it looks like. But maybe not. Where is he going to go? Sixth, maybe seventh, fifth, 175, 111, 73 at the time. That's a good run right there. He can improve on that with one more to go. Nine riders have completed the course. Matti Suhumari of Finland. A <laughs> little bit of a Mobot is our gold medalist so far. Suhumari from Pick, from Strong. Alex Massey of Canada. And here's Massey now. Knows what, knows what he has to do. Sixth in snowboard cross. Let's see what Massey can do. The 26-year-old. First and a second earlier in the season in Lillehammer. 0 0.90 back. He's in touch for the top three. Alex Massey, one fast Canadian here on course. Oh, a little speed check there. You don't want to do that. To the heel edge. What's it going to be for Massey? And Massey will go into fourth just outside that top three. So you see the 110s all the way down to Keith Gable in fifth with the 110 9 2. Ollie Hill of Great Britain. 
launches himself into the course, gets his need for speed on a snowboard, used to ride a superbike in the UK. He's only been on the snow for a year and a half. And down the step, down to the transition, just 0.43 back. Still a good, solid time right now. And work it to the bottom here. Paralympic debut for Ollie Hill, the 32-year-old. Solid turns there. Here we go to the finish line for Hill. He'll go into second place, 110-45, sitting in the silver for Ollie Hill. Great Britain, two and three right now. Yeah, Ollie Hill pushing Owen Pick into the bronze medal position. <laughs> and it is just 0.22 of a second between them. Sun Ki oh. of China, fourth in the snowboarder. He is one of the four snowboarders from China who competed in Pyeongchang four years ago, spearheading what we're now seeing as quite some force for the People's Republic of China in this sport. Fourth in snowboard cross here in Beijing. Let's see what he can do. He can put the times in too. Look at the edge work there, keeping it low through the lines. On the heel turn there. Trying to get in the top three. A 110-6-4 is what he's trying to beat. He's going to pump it across. Look at this. He goes into number one, sitting in the gold with a 109-7-3 for Sun Ki. Nicely done. One of four Chinese riders to compete in Pyeongchang. Leading the way for the team on the snow in Beijing. Andy McLeod of Great Britain takes to the snow, speaks fluent Scottish Gaelic and likes to fish. Can he find a winning line on this course? Andy McLeod, 17 in snowboard cross. <sighs> Paralympic debut for him. Oh, he's going to be off that time. You can see 47.74, so he's 7.36 back, so not in touch with that top three. So what it's going to be for him is you want to get your personal best. That's what he's going to be shooting for. So whatever time he puts down right now, he'll look to try and improve on that. And every time you come down this course, you should try to be able to improve on your time without mistakes. He'll come across the time in, 118.52 in the 13th place. That'll do. Ichikawa Takahito of Japan. Friend helped him get into the sport. And he's inspired by Japan's gold medalist from four years ago, Narita Garamu. Ichikawa here looking good. Top five finish and cross, kind of preloads on the step down jump. Keeping that heel work, keeping that toe work solid. Drawing those lines, that's the key here. You want to draw those lines. Top three, you got to beat a 110-4-5 to get at least into the bronze right now. Looks like he's going to be out of that time, but where does he go? Top eight, 111-3-1 for Ichikawa. Six more riders on the start list. Matthias Menendez Garcia of France has worked as a sailing instructor, ski instructor. He loves to snowboard, loves to ride just for the pure pleasure of it. But now he wants a fast time to inspire others to take up para sports. MMG on course, the 29-year-old. Oh, little stumble there, able to keep on the edge. Let's see what this does for him. A very decent time. He's going to come across in the 11th spot. 112-19 for MMG. Matias Menendez Garcia from France. E. Jayuk of Korea under that helmet. He's got a fantastic beetle style mop top of hair and his philosophy is even if you have a second go give it your best at your first attempt just two runs in this bank slalom competition fastest time wins you might as well put that down as soon as you can 
So he's going to be 5.22 back from the split time. So he would be very tough to make that up because you look at your top three right now. 109.73 for first. 109.98 for second. 110.45 for the bronze. Lin Kui in the top spot. The People's Republic of China. And he's going to come across and check in into 15th. A 115.83 for Jay Yuk. Yang Wendi of China. Competing on the world stage for the first time, he says, made his heart beat so fast. He's also a para-alpine skier in the LW4 category. So 2-1-5 back here on the split. Not too far back. The 109.73 is the time to beat for the gold. 109.98, the time to beat for the silver. 110.45, the time to beat for the bronze. Let's see what he can do here for the final two turns to the toe edge. And here we go. Coming across the line into 12th, a 112-20 for Jan. Three riders still to complete this course. But at the top in the gold medal position as it stands, Sun Ki of China, Mati Su Harami, Hamari in silver, Oli Hill of Great Britain in the bronze medal position as we see Matthias Keller of Germany take to the course. Team Germany, relative newcomers to the Paris snowboarding community. They've got a very positive attitude and by trade, Matthias is an industrial mechanic. Matt Z, he goes by. And Matt Z, 19th in snowboard cross out here in Beijing. It's Paralympic debut for him. For the 40 year old. Be out of that top time on the split. It's all about the personal best now. Matsi comes in these last two berms. That's to the toe edge for him. Regular foot rider now to the heel. And he's going to come across the time. It's going to be a 120 16 into the top 20 from Nestle into the 18th spot. Wojciech Taraba of Poland, snowboard instructor, needed surgery to his eye socket after a crash in training four years ago in Pyeongchang. He's going to be looking for that personal best performance on the snow of Beijing 2022. Taraba now looking at that 47.74. He's going to be back on that time. How far back is he? 5.66. The man with the hair for the flare. As you can see, those dreadlocks. Coming out the bottom of that bib. Making his way down to the bottom section here. A few turns to go. Good toe edge turn there for him. Trying to avoid any sort of tail wash on that. Solid toe edge turn there. Getting that speed tuck. And he'll cross. 117.09 for Taraba. 17th place in the standings. To prepare. For Laurent Belika of France, a gymnast. Again, working to get more people to take out. He's uh, missed. That uh, is not the route he wanted to take down this course. And that will happen, will be a DNF, because you're not able to finish the course if you go outside those gates. So this time will not count. Looks like his uh, left arm looks a little uncomfortable as he's coming down there. So hopefully he's able to take another run. But we'll see how that works. So did not finish DNF for Laurent. And your top three, Sun Kui in the top spot, a 109.73, sitting in the gold. Matty Sirhamari from Finland sitting in the silver right now. And Ollie Hill from Great Britain sitting in third with a 110.45. Liu Zhen Liang of China. Trailblazer for the Chinese. One of four riders in Pyeongchang when he was just 19 years old, inspired by the great Sean White. Looking to improve on 14th place from four years ago. Sean White, of course, retiring earlier in the season at the Olympic Winter Games. 
He's done competitive snowboarding, so that's a good influence to have. Liu Zhengliang, 23 years old for the People's Republic of China, 15th in snowboard cross this year. For the two-time Paralympian. Nice, very effortless on that step down. You can see the way he lands on that, keeps that speed, that momentum going forward. The final three turns for him. And here we go. It's going to be outside the top. It's all about the personal best here. Crossing the line. A 114.49. Just under five seconds back. Such a smooth, efficient style from a lot of these Chinese riders. Manuel Ness of Germany. Looking to take Team Germany into the future of para snowboarding. Look at the time here, 47.74. He'll be back on that. Let's see how far back he is. That's going to be 779 back. Emmanuel Ness, my favorite quote. We believe we make experiences, but experiences make us. Of course, he's having a good experience with being able to ride the snowboard and make those turns standing sideways. And let's see what the time is for Ness. And 119.73, top 20. Little wave. Get the board off. Get back on the lift to the top of the hill. Bernard Hammerl of Austria. We love their inspirational stories and uh, this quote wants to awake the fire that caught him to motivate future athletes. Also a member of that Rad Dad Club. His family watching as he competes out here. Good turns, nice and calculate, calculating there. I like how he throws a nice little spray off that board. That has a, kind of like a shiner, we'll call that. Surfing, that's definitely throwing spray. <laughs> nice. And it slaps the tail down on the step down. Very skate style. He uh, entered a contest at a fast food restaurant and won a snowboard. That'll motivate you as he makes his way down. Very hard. Olympic debut, Paralympic debut for him. 138 on the nose of Bernhard. Proud to wear the team uniform of Austria. Yi Yiping is proud to be representing the People's Republic of China, the host nation of these sensational Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. 47.74 is the split time. He'll be 51.51, so he'll be back on that. His ambition was to compete in Beijing, and he's doing just that. So you can mark that one off the list. He Yiping, Paralympic debut for the People's Republic of China for the 21-year-old. The finish line in sights, 114.24, top 15. So a little glance back up the course to perhaps see which racing line will get him down quicker on his second and final attempt. Hossein Solgani making his second appearance at the Paralympic Winter Games. One of the first male snowboarders to represent the Islamic Republic of Iran back in 2018 where he finished 17th. Cool story about him. Grew up near a resort. Not a lot of resorts in Iran. I grew up near one, and that got his his stoke for snowboarding. A little speed check on the step down there. With that knock need style approach, like it, good style on the heel to the toe. You see the grooves developing on the turns. It's getting harder to find that line. 
Solgani, 130-41, 23rd. And he completes with a smile. The start list for the men's bank slalom SB LL2 category. First run, one to come. Sunki of China leading the way, 0.25 of a second ahead of Mati Suhamari of Finland. Ollie Hill of Great Britain in the bronze medal position, just ahead of his teammate Owen Pick. Evan Strong in the top five, but the time's really close in that top seven. Laurent Velikia not completing, but he will still have a chance for a second run. Conditions a little cooler than they have been on the mountain, but it hasn't cooled the spirit of the fans. We're ready for the second run of the women's LL2. They will be going for the medals, gold, silver, and bronze up for grabs in the SB LL2 category. So they do go in a reverse order now for the second and final runs, meaning your top qualifiers will go last. And that gives the advantage to the top qualifiers. They earn that spot so they can see what the times are from the other riders. So they'll get them up in the gate and they will go in a reverse order now. Final chance to take some notes. A little suggestion or two about how to proceed down the course. Yeah, game plan time. Really see what he's saying there. You really want to pump out of that. He's calling that the squirt road. It throws your momentum forward. It keeps that speed going into your next turn. So preparations nearly ready at the top of the hill. That's Brittany Curry thinking that she's not the first in, but it looks like she will be getting us into position as she's strapping in, getting those bindings just how she wants them to get to the start line. 151.31, her time on the first run. The best time, Hu Nianjia of China. 118.05 is the time to beat to win a gold medal. Well, she, Brittany Curry would be actually the second one to go. So get That's why she was confused. She was, uh, she was being hustled into the start gate. Yeah, she it, didn't think she was first, but it should be Sega Ruzbe yeah, of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Once again, if you're wondering about the start this is how they do it when you the number one qualifiers get to go last so it goes in reverse order from how your your time is so I think Rosebelt will be first then followed by Brittany Corey but I think we've got a, a does not start potentially here um, we know that Caitlin Madry didn't take her first run uh, she has been crossed off the start list so Brittany Corey will get the second run underway for the women's bank slalom SB LL2 Looking to beat 151.34. Had a few issues at the top of the course when she started out on her first run, so she can definitely carve some seconds off this 
as she pushes for a place on the podium at Beijing 2022. Yeah, we don't know what happened to her on that first run, but she definitely did not have a Brittany Corey style time. So you know that she can put it together if she is able to be clean top to bottom. That's what she's trying to do here. Silver in bank slalom and Peyong Chang. And she's got the skills to make that happen and get on the podium. But right now, she is sitting in with a 151.34. So she's looking to try and beat a 118.05 for first, a 118.13 for the silver, a 118.62 for the bronze. Let's see what she does down here. Already looking better. But she'll be 316 back. Let's see what she can do here. To get in the medals position, got to be the 118.62. And again, it's a Lee Curry towards the bottom. She's going to be out tied of that top spot. Let's go, Brittany Curry. Cross the line. Where does she go? Into ninth place, a 122.30. An improvement. There was a little sigh of disappointment there before we saw that uh, cheerfulness that she's renowned for. But Romy Shop is into the course, dropping down for Switzerland. Romy with a 125.08. Better in the 12th spot, so trying to climb out of that. Let's see how far back she is here. That's going to be 4.55 back for Shop. Trying to get up in the top three. You need to beat a 118.62. That's what you're looking to beat. There we go. She's outside of it. She beat her time looking for a personal best here. And she does it. She improves. 12th place, a 124.77. And she is spent. Romy Shop of Switzerland picks herself up. The adrenaline lag when you've completed the course. Renske von Beck of the Netherlands has finished outside the podiums at the Paralympic Winter Games. Can she make it onto the podium this time round? 118.62 would give her anything quicker than that will take her onto the podium. Renski now here towards the middle section of this course. Renski in the 11th spot. It's going to be tough to get up in that top three right now. To do her best and draw those lines all the way down. Little tail wash there. And she's looking to definitely try and beat her 123.26. That's the number that she's looking for. That's the number in her mind right now. See how she just draws the line. You point the shoulder. On one of those race boards, too, as well. Here's the split time is the 53.87. 3.86 back. But it's not about that top time. It's about getting your personal best, trying to beat your 123.26. Let's see how she can do that towards the bottom section here. Lorensky Van Beek. She's currently now in the 10th spot, working her way. Here we go. Is this going to be an improvement for her? And no, run one is going to be the one. And snow conditions will determine how you finish. Let's keep on beat. And just uh, see her heading into the opening stages of the run. You can see a little bit of that tail wash right there. That slows you down just a bit. Great slow-mo action. There's a step down. Oh, kind of almost tweaks out that tail just a little bit, showing some style there. And she'll come across the finish line there. Very similar one to her run number one, where she had the fastest time for her, the 123.26.
Canada, Sandrine Hamill. In position. Ready for launch. 123.05. Looks good here, so Sandrine Hamill, the two-time Paralympian, eighth in snowboard cross in Beijing. Lots of top 10 finishes for Sandrine Hamill. Good line drawn there. Takes the high line into that bank. It's a package deal. You gotta be strong on the toe edge, and you gotta be strong on the heel edge. Can't favor one or the, over the other when it comes to bank slalom. Even amount of banks on both sides, as we've talked about. Speaks two languages, motocross, does it all. Drawing those lines, okay, 53-8-7. Let's see how far back she is. 3-4-1 back for Hamill. Looking to beat her 123.05. That's what she's trying to beat here. Couple turns to go. Dives down into the lower part of this one. Looking to try and get better than that time. And she's going to improve into top 10. 481 back. A 122.86. Solid finish. There's the jump, kind of lands a little bit on the knuckle. That usually costs you a little bit of time when you do that. Tenth place so far for Sandrine Hamel. That's uh, the best she can do in Beijing 2022. The number one bib of Lisa Dion. 121.62, her first run. She's looking to continue her good form that she had coming into these games. An international debut this season. She's been impressive. It's been a long journey to compete. And with silver in snowboard cross, so already won a medal for her. She would like to make it a two pack and get another one. So silver in snowboard cross, her Paralympic debut. I mean, that's one for one right there. When you when you come out and compete in the Paralympics for your, your Paralympic debut and you come away with a medal, there's no guarantee on that as she draws some solid lines through these banks. 37 years ago, Bank Slalom made its first appearance in Mount Baker Resort in Washington. And here we are at the Paralympic Winter Games. Large and in charge as Lisa DeYoung makes her way down. Her time, a 121.62 to get in the top three. It'd be better than a 118.62. Some very fast times. She's 1.6 back. So it's doable. Can she make up the time here at the bottom part of this course for DeYoung? Here we go. Diving down low here. Got to keep it low. Don't want tail wash. Stay on the edge. Back to that heel edge. Young is going to come across. And she's going to go into eighth place at 120.19. And that is going to be her best time right there. Well, long wait. Getting the competition underway. And then a wait before coming down for this second run, but worth it. Mum of two, she's it. done the girls proud. Look at that style, just so good, the way you do that toe edge, how she just really hugs that blue line. And that is an improvement. Number seven, Cecile Hernandez of France. She had a little shake of the head when she completed her first run. Clue thinks that she could take potentially a better line and ease her way onto the podium. She's some way off that at the moment. The best time, 118.05. Hu Ninja of China setting the gold standard. Cecile Hernandez, that was not a Cecile Hernandez style first run. You know she can be faster than that. She's got the gold already from snowboard cross. She's drawing some nice lines here from toe to heel, heel to toe. And that's what she's trying to do. Now, pay attention to the split when that split comes up. Cecilia Hernandez is currently in the seventh spot. 
a 119.39. So maybe better than a 118.62 to get into the top three. Cecile Hernandez knows what she has to do. She's a three-time Paralympic medalist. So no stranger to the podium when it comes to Paralympic Winter Games competition. There's the 53.87. She's not far back. Only .43 for Cecile Hernandez now. This is what she needs to do. Onto the toe edge. Oh, a little wash there. Got to stay strong. Tiny bit of chatter on the toe edge here. Cecile Hernandez trying to challenge the top three. On the toe edge to the finish line. Cecile Hernandez, does she do it? She goes into third, 118-48, sitting in the bronze for Cecile Hernandez. Well, the 47-year-old French woman has to battle her body every time she takes to the course. When she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, she was told 10 years ago she'd never walk again. Look at her now in the Paralympic Winter Games. She was in touch with it. Let's watch the step down. See, now she lands on the knuckle right there. That takes a little bit of time, adds time to you. When you go to that step down, you want to get over it, land on that down transition. If you land perfectly on the down transition, that keeps your speed going and digs the front set edge at the end. Save the best till last, Cecile Hernandez. And now she must wait. Sitting in bronze medal position. Geng Yang Hong of China. The kid, just 17 years old. Deep breaths is how she prepares to get out of that gate, over the rollers, and then it's pretty anaerobic on the way down. Well, here is Kang now, ninth in snowboard cross out here. The People's Republic of China representing so solid, such good riders coming out of China, including Yang right here. Began snowboarding in 2017. Well, her goal, her ambition, was just to compete in Beijing, and she's already achieved that. Her family, her huge influence on her riding. And let's see where she can check in on this split time, and if she can challenge the top three. Right now, 118.48, Cecile Hernandez in that bronze medal spot. That's what she's looking to try and get above that. This will be our split time now. How far back is she? She's up, 0.11. This is a good run. Here we go. Can't she hold on to this time? Looking solid on the heel edge. Back to the toe. One final turn, and then you just point it. Here we go. Can she challenge it? Yes, she can. She does it. 117.38, sitting in a gold right now for Gang. Nicely done. Oh. China 1-2, Geng leading Hu. Hu still to take her second run, but the kid riding this course beautifully. Everything she did was so calculated. Watch the step down here. Just a little bit on that knuckle. I, I feel like she could even be faster than that, but the kid putting it together, unfortunately for Cecile Hernandez, she'll be bumped out of a podium position and be bumped into fourth. Shaving almost two seconds off that time. Family not far from home. Now, Lisa Munchausen, how much pressure is she putting on herself? She's desperate to get onto that podium. Partner Chris Voss going for an elusive gold medal on her third appearance at the Paralympic Winter Games. Three-time Paralympian, Sabud Schotten. Right now, she is INA. 118.13 for bronze. 118.05 for silver. 119.16, or 117.38 is the one for gold. That's what Gang just put down. The fastest time in the LL2 for the women right now, the 117.38. So is that going to be doable for Bouchant? We're going to see that split time coming up. You want to stay solid from toe to heel. I don't know if she's going to be in contention for it. 
It does not look like it. she's going to be back on this one. Yeah, 1.03 in Shanton. Course deteriorating quickly now with the warmer conditions. Lots of grooves out there. And here we go. The time before was a 119.02. We shot him to the finish line. Where is she going to go with this one? She goes into seventh, 119. So her run two, a better time, but not enough to crack the top three. Great sporting spirit, but disappointment for the Dutch rider. Just not finding speed down the course. And you can see the tail wash there. You can see how the board just is moving a little bit. You don't want that. I don't know if it's edges or what. Great on the transition there on that step down. That was solid. But the board was getting a lot of chatter. It was moving around a lot. She does get her personal best right there. But you know she wanted top three. The face is it all. Li Tiang Tiang. China sitting in the golden medal positions. Can she join the party at the top of the table? She's into the rollers, pumping to find some speed to take her close to a place on the podium and join her teammates, Geng and Hu. Well, to put those kind of times in, she's going to need to be near perfect. The 117.38 is a massively fast time that Gang put in with that 117.38. Then you move down to who sitting in that number two spot with a 118.05. And then from the USA, Brenna Huckabee in third with a 118.13. Or Tian Tian looking to try and challenge it. She's just got to stay solid. Stay in your edges. But you know with that course getting softer throughout the day, it's harder to put in those fast times. And it looks like, well, it looks like she's going to be out of touch with this one. No, she is in with .40. Can she hold this together to the bottom? Could we see China 1, 2, 3 right now? Li Tiantan putting together a run on the toe edge here, staying in the grooves. Oh, that's a good turn there. Tiantan. Look at this. Check the time. Check the time here. 117.46 goes into second. 0.08 back sitting in the silver for Li Tiantian. It's gold, silver, bronze for China. Geng, Li, Hu on the podium. Look at the work there. And you got to feel... There's even a couple little mini mistakes on there. So you feel like without those, you're going to be in that number one spot. But still, such good riding, sitting in the silver right now. Silver medal position so far for Li Tiang Tiang. Hu Nianjiang is yet to go on her second rung. We have another challenger, Wu Jingyu. What can she do on her second run? Not quite so confident on the first run. She takes the back edge turn into the first corner. But the times are very close too, even though she may not be in the top three. Her 118.62 is not far from a 118.05 with who's sitting in that third spot right now. So if you could just be three quarters of a second faster, You'll be sitting in a medals position, drawing the lines. You can see that toe edge really favors that toe edge. Solid on the toe edge. Tiny bit of wash there, but still nothing too bad there. Once again, go flat in between the turns, then get back on that edge and get into that groove. Let's see, the split time will say it all. So 0.18, so she's very much has a chance to get into the top three. What can Wang do here? Putting it together. Can she challenge the top three? Now to the bottom section, salt on the toe edge there. Back to the heel. 
pointing across the line. What does Wayne get? Into fifth place, 118-31, so close. Four of the top five places in the women's SBLL2. Bank slalom held by China. Taking a look here, the style is good. And there's not a lot of room for air at this point because you, the time that Wang put in at 118.31, a bronze is 118.05, so it's not far away. Just one little mistake. Two riders to go. Geng Yang Hong knows that she's guaranteed at least a bronze medal. She's sitting in gold at the moment. What can Brenna Huckabee do about that? The American just off the podium in fourth place after her first run. She needs to take on the clock. She sure does, and she's a three-time Paralympic medalist. And what she's looking at right now is a 118.05. Now, she had a 118.13, but that's a fast time, too. Now she has a second look at this course. Will that help her out? Will that give her an advantage? Right now, Brenna Huckabee on the outside looking in, in fourth. Right now looking at a 118.05 for the bronze, a 117.46 for the silver, a 117.38 for the gold. Brenna Huckabee on course. Staying high on those lines. I don't know if that's going to affect the time. Grooves developing too. You can see the course is definitely getting battered throughout the competition. Here we go, the split, 0 0.40 back. Oh, rolling down the windows a bit there. Brenna Huckabee in fourth. Can she do it? Trying to claim the top three, get back into a medal. Three-time Paralympic medalist, Brenna Huckabee. The final turn, Brenna Huckabee pointing it across the line. Can she get the top three? She goes into the first place of the gold, a 117-28 for Brenna Huckabee, sitting in gold. She doesn't know how to react because she is guaranteed at least a silver medal, but she sits in the gold medal position after that outstanding run. It's slower at the top of the course, but really picking up some speed after that split time to take her to the top of the pile in the women's bank slalom SBLL2. Did you hear the, what she said? Am I on the podium when she got back? And then she rolls the windows down there and you think there's oh, no way. Hi, Lila. Hi, Sloan, Tristan, Mom, Dad. Jordan, Jeremy, Brittany, that was for you guys. I miss you. I love you. Represent Louisiana. <laughs> she doesn't even have any mountains in her home state. So we have Hu Nianjia, who has just been pushed off the podium, sitting in gold medal position after the first run. She needs to produce something special to get ahead of Brenna Huckabee and ahead of her two teammates that are sitting in silver and bronze medal. Well, what she needs to do here is get out of that fourth spot. Oh, and that's going to cost her right there. Goes outside the top of that bank. That could hurt. That could be what she did not need in this situation. She's just going to have to stay, try to make up that time. Will that affect? It's hard to get that out of your mind. When you have that mistake out there, then you, you're thinking to yourself, can I make it up? But she just needs to focus on the task at hand, and that is be fast. Right now, who looking to beat a 117.46 for a bronze, a 117.38 for the silver, a 117.28 for the gold. Did that mistake cost her? We're going to find out right here in this first split. Is she within charge of this? The split, here it comes, 0.95. So she's going to need to make up that time here at the bottom. What can she do here? Here is who? On the outside, looking in, fourth place. Can she challenge it? Needs to beat a 117.46 to get into medal contention. The final turn, gonna point it across the finish line. Can who do it here? No, fourth place. She'll remain in fourth place, and that means Brenna Huckabee will grab the gold, Gang Yao Hong will grab the silver, and Lee Tiang Tian will grab the bronze.
Brenna Huckabee. An inspiration for snowboarders across this discipline. The very epitome of the Paralympic motto, spirit in motion and in embracing those Paralympic core values of determination, equality, inspiration and courage. But look at the delight on the Chinese athletes as well. You've got a feel for who Nian Jia though. That one corner there sitting in the gold medal position for such a long part of the competition and just those fractions of a second lost at the top, denying her a place on the podium. We talked about it earlier. One little mistake on this course can cost you the time, and you saw it right there. That, just that tiny little mistake is the difference between a medal and fourth place. It's gold for Brenna Huckabee of the United States of America. Geng Yang Hong of China takes the silver. Li Tiang Tiang takes the bronze. So confirmation of the results of the Women's Bank Slalom SBLL2 final. Brenna Huckabee of the United States, the gold medal winner ahead of Geng Yang Hong of China, Li Tiang Tiang taking the bronze. And we see confirmation of all the finishes as we stand by for the recognition ceremony at the bottom of the slopes. Well, here they are, the bronze, Li Tiantian, the silver, Gang Yahong, and the gold medal, Brenna Huckabee. So a chance for the crowd at the bottom of the Genting Snow Park to recognize the achievements of these Paralympians. The People's Republic of China has invested in the future of para snowboarding and being rewarded. Liang Tiang Tiang, just 18 years old. He's only been riding for four years. And what 
future for Gang Yang Hong, known as the kid, just 17 years old, the youngest on the Chinese team. This won't be her first trip to the podium, we feel. like it's just beginning to dawn on her that she is the Paralympic banked slalom SBLL2 champion Brenna Huckabee what a performance many mountains in Louisiana you have to go a little further afield to find some snow but Brenna Huckabee did just that and now she's a Paralympic champion showed real nerve on her second run to dig deep and move into the gold medal spot pushing Hu Nianjia of China off the podium having led the competition for so long two runs Fastest down the mountain. And on day seven of Beijing 2022, it was Brenna Huckabee. The men's bank slalom, SBUL. Second run, final run. It's time to decide the medals for the athletes with upper limb impairment in para snowboarding. Day seven of Beijing 2022. This could be interesting. The course getting a little quicker towards the bottom half. As we see the athletes limbering up, conditions a little cooler. It's below zero on the hill today. We'll see those sitting in gold, silver, and bronze after run one as our final three riders. The order has been changed. And that's Zhu Yonggang of China strapping in, visualizing the course. 134 54 the time he would like to beat. He drops into the course. Running regular. Back heel around the first of these 21 turns. 54 gates on the course at the Genting Snow Park in Zhangjikou. And here is Yu Young Gang now. Bronze in snowboard cross. Here in Beijing 2022. So that time that he had, that time that he put down, the 134 at 5'4, he definitely can go a lot faster than that. He had problems on the first run, hence that time. So you know if he's clean top to bottom, he can definitely challenge it, being that he was the bronze medal winner from Snowboard Cross. Let's see what he does here as he approaches the midway point. This will be this will show you the split time. Zi Li Jia. The 109.86, 
Goes a little bit back on that. Just to get into a bronze medal situation, needs to beat a 110-24. Keep that time in mind. 110-24. Wang Peng Yao in that third spot. That's the bronze. Here we go. Can he challenge it? He's going to hop across. And he goes into third place, sitting in the bronze with a 110-14. He did it. Look at the difference, 134-54 to a 110-14. At the top, Matti Sirenen of Finland drops into action. So here is Matti Sirenen now. 18th finish in snowboard cross, the two-time Paralympian. Matty's looking at the time that he put in was a 123.98. So it's all about that personal best right now for Matty Saarinen. Trying to eclipse a 123.98 from run number one. And so far it looks good. Here he is on the heel edge. Can he beat that time? Oh, it's close. It is going to be an improvement. 123, three run for Matty Sarnin. That is his Paralympic winter competition complete. I'm just catching what he's saying to those back home. Konstantinos Petrakis of Greece. 121, 27 on his first run. Looking to improve on that. Constantinos here now. We'll see with that kind of touching the gate there. 47.82. He is 8.24 back. So now it's all about trying to beat your 121.27. That is the time that's on his mind now. Good, good toe work there on that toe edge. A little bit of a wash there. Here we go. Can he beat his time? Looking for a personal best for Petrikas. He does it, 127.9, 16th place. He improves. He's got one more job to do, and that will be to bring in the flag for Greece at the closing ceremony. Michael Spivey still has 540 meters of snow and 21 turns to complete. Spivey here, he's well back, six seconds back for Spivey, the two-time Paralympian, 41 years old. He's a surfer as well, part of that Adaptive Action Sports Club at Copper Mountain, and by Daniel Gale and Amy Purdy. And pretty time Paralympic medalist, but here's Spivey, trying to beat his time. Can he get his personal best here? He does, 117.75. For Spicy of the USA. Way to go. This is Park Syuk of Korea, 21 year old. And some uh, pumping action to get some speed at the top of the course, which seems to be slightly slower than the bottom. Definitely with these conditions, with the softer conditions that we talked about, makes it a little tough. Those grooves develop, and you can see it. When they come around these turns, you can see those grooves. They're just getting worked in there. More riders on this course. Nice other step down. He's six seconds back. Park trying to beat a 116.90. Get his personal best. Let's see what he can do here. Mark Sio from Korea, the 21-year-old. Onto the toe edge. He's going to point it. And checks in. 116.90. Run number one is going to be his fastest. Solid showing for Park here today. Looks like he will be completing the competition in 12th place overall as we take a look at Oani Masataka of Japan.
Awani, 3-4-9 back. Eight in snowboard cross in his Paralympic debut. Just missing the podium earlier this season. And a couple other events in Lily Hammer. Awani, 114-39. He's, he's going to keep run number one as his fastest time. For Masataka. Already up to Lee Chung Min. Forty-seven eight two, so he's three point two zero back for Lee Chung Min. Republic of Korea. And 14.01 was his time. Let's see what he gets here. Is this going to be a personal best? He crosses with a 113.65, his personal best today. Great showing for Lee Chung Min from Korea. Top with Mirko Moro. Set to see a complete run from the Italian. We get a good look of how this course is carving up at the top, where there's time to be made up, potentially going high on that bank. Marco getting a little higher than you probably want to on these banks, but the approach is there. He's trying to go high and dive down into that low line. And Marco Moro, the Italian, just 19 years old, 13th in snowboard cross. His Paralympic debut here. Let's see what he can do as we approach that split time that he's looking to try and challenge. And he's going to be off that. How far off is he? Moro will be 2.78 back for Moro. He's drawn some solid lines. I just think probably just a little bit too high on the banks, which can end up costing you time. And the approach is definitely there. The style is there. Looking to beat a 113.17 for his personal best. And he's going to do it. 112.95. He goes into 11th. Once again, we talk about the line choice. And I feel like that is the line you want to take, is that lower line. Now, here he is down the step down. Perfect. And gets his personal best, the 112.95 from Berko Moro. Fellow Italian Riccardo Cardini in the gate. Oh, that's an impressive helmet, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Statement of intent as he looks to beat 112.89 from his first run. Back edge carve into the first corner, toes into the second. And pointing his way down the 540 meters of this Genting South Snow Park course and Ricardo right now looking at a top three position you need to be fast we're talking a 110 14 Zhu Yang Gang in that number three spot sitting in the bronze Maxime Mattaglioni from France sitting in the silver with a 109.87 Ji Lajia from China doing it with a 109.86 a blistering fast time so how far back is Cardani 278 and now it becomes, you start looking at, you want to get your personal bass there. 112.89. Like those heel turns. A little chatter, though. Just a little chatter out of that board on the heel. Draws a nice line there. 
And here we go to the finish line, the time. He's going to keep run number one, and he'll be in 10th place with that one. 303 back. Yes. Great work on that toe edge. I feel like that heel edge is where he gets a little bit of chatter. That's perfect. You see how that's effortless the way he lands there on that step down. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. Sometimes you're not sure if they're sure. There's a microphone there. James Barnes Miller of Great Britain. 1.12.39, his time on run one. Desperate to improve on that. I'm really working it at the top edge of this course. Keeping low. Right on the edge. And smooth on that heel turn. Yeah, one thing you notice about JBM is he's He's very calculated. You don't see a lot of body movement. He really stays in those grooves to the best of his ability. So we'll see where this puts him. James Barnes Miller, 112-39, in ninth right now, trying to get up in that top three. You gotta be above a 110-14. So that is a big time to get. Can JBM do it as he makes his way down here? Here's the split time of the 47-8-2. How far back is he on that? 272, so just under three seconds. For JBM here. 112 39 is what he had on run number one. Little chatter on the heel, and that course could be deteriorating in that section there. Back off the heel edge here. Kind of preloading on those rollers. And a 113 12, he's going to keep run number one. JBM will stay in ninth. Top 10 right now as it stands for JBM. We turn our eyes to Mike Miner of the USA. 31 years old. Talking to himself at the top of the course there. He might have been singing, I think. What was singing? <laughs> Preloads on the rollers. See how he draws those lines, extends the body to try and get his maximum speed out of right there. Lifts up. A little high up there. You want to keep that down low. Mike Miner, a 112-16 in eight. He's going to need to shave off a couple of seconds off that if he wants to come away with a medal today. And I don't know if that high line is going to do it. Good turn on the toe edge there. Solid on the heel there. Tries to dive back down low. Okay, 47.82. That's the split time. How far back is he? So just two seconds back of that split. If he can improve, he could challenge possibly for a bronze here. I don't know. It's looking a little high across those lines he's drawn. Kind of fighting it on the heel there. Solid on the toe there. Magic Mike, a little outside of that one. And he's going to come across in eighth. Lost some time down to the bottom. Eighth place for Mike Miner for the USA. Just shows how important it is to put a great score on the board in your first run. And you can see it there. Just taking the high lines, taking the high lines on those bank turns. You don't want to be too high up in there because that takes the speed away from you. We move up to Yang Jiang of China. Sub 112 in his first run, 28 years old. 
he wanted to be a Paralympian. He is now a fully fledged Paralympian. Will he be a Paralympic medalist? It's a very compact style that we see from the Chinese riders. Very streamlined, but very strong legs. You just don't see the body movement. Yeah, you see it nice and low. Center of gravity, knees bent. Stay over those bindings. Don't get too high up. There's a lot of things to think about when you're out on a course like this, and especially the transfer from one edge to the other. When you go from toe to heel, that right there is so important when it comes to riding on a bank slalom course. Let's see where he's at here. 47.82, that's a split time. He's gonna be back just about a second and a half for Yang right now in the number seven spot. He's trying to get better than a 110-14. So if he could shave a second and a half off that first time that he put down, he could do it and be sitting in the bronze. Good approach there. Gotta stay low and explode over the rollers. What's it gonna be? Into seventh, 111-71. Faster than run number one, but it's gonna put him in seventh place. A little, once again, notice the high line approach. That does not seem to be the fastest way. That is perfect. Down the step down, on the transition. But taking, but taking, that, taking that high line though is what will, will affect it. And some want to use the adage, more speed out of it. Jacopo Lucchini of Italy. On the start line at the Paralympic Winter Games. Final run in the bank slalom. SB UL. His first run was 111.6. He's made a real statement of intent. So edge into that first bend and then riding the big ones smoothly, trying to find his rhythm early on. <laughs> in the course, looking pretty, pretty sound. I'll tell you though, I did like the start. The way he pre-jumped on those rollers, he was using the rollers to advantage to get that speed going off the start. Now, that helps you out, but you need to be solid through all the banks too. You don't want to get too high up. You want to stay about that midsection, dive back out in the corner. I like the start of it. Let's see what that does for him. So yeah, 0.58 back, so not too bad. McKinney looking good in six right now. What does he need? He needs to beat a 110-14 to get into a metal situation. So Lucchini now, oh, has a little bit of a bobble there. Can he, re can he respawn back from that? Here's Lucchini towards the bottom, off the toe edge. The time, check the time. He goes into fifth, 110-28, a better run, but I think that little bobble right there at the end might have cost him that opportunity for a bronze. Yeah, the start was really good. The way he anticipated the rollers and kind of pre-jumped them. And then tried to use that to kind of almost butter and point that nose across the line to get by a little faster. Does improve. In the top five, very solid finish right there for Lucchini. Big number nine, Wang Peng Yao of China. Encouragement from his teammates. I've jumped early, it's Zhang Jiao. We have to wait for Wang. Bib number seven. That's been a really energetic start at the top from Jiang. Like how he anticipates going into each of those berms. Watch him extend the body right there and then back down over those bent knees. Zhang Xiao on course. See how he dives down low there. With a pump into those turns. Let's see, is he in touch? 
with this 47-8-2. He's going to be back. 1.11. But not enough to where you could, you definitely could make that up. He's looking to try and get better than a 110-14 to get no bronze. Let's see what he can do here. Yang Ji Hao to the final turn. Can he get in a metal situation here? And not going to do it. 111.16, his personal best today. But sixth place is where he ends up right now. It was a real statement of intent from the top half of that course. He felt he was really trying to put the energy into the board. And that looked good on the step down. But I think what happens was he was going a little too high into those berms once again, which cost you a little bit of time. So 111.16, personal best. Xiang Ji Hao. Now we have bib number nine, Wong Peng Yo of China. Can he book his place on the podium at Beijing 2022? 1 10 24, his best time. He'll have to go quicker to bag a medal. Good turns in there, staying nice and low. A little high under that one, but he's in fourth with a 110-24. So what he's looking for is not to shave too much off. A 110-14 would put him in the top three if he could get above that. You know, second time on the course, you feel a little bit more comfortable with it, getting some more time on it. And this will all show right here coming up as we see the split time. It was a 47-8-2 is what he was looking to try and get in front of. He's going to be back just a little bit, 0.29. So this is doable for him. Pengao, let's see what he can do here. Trying to get into the top three. Wing Pengao. There's the toe edge. Wing Pengao, here we go. Pointing it, pumping, crossing the line. Into fourth place. A better run, a better time. But fourth place is where he ends up. So what that also means is Zhu Yang Gang will end up with a bronze medal because the next two competitors are above him. So the 110-18 from Wang Peng Yao, fourth place, is how that'll end up. We're down to our last two riders in the men's bank slalom, SBUL. Maxime Montagnoni of France in the silver medal position. He can do no worse, but can he get gold? He is fired up for this final run down the Genting Snow Park course at Jiang Jiakou. Trying to find the speed on these banks, digging in on that heel edge. Smooth on the toes, heel to toe, 540 meters down the course. He's drawing his lines like an artist here. Montagioni, 109.87, has him in second place. Xi in the top spot with a 109.86. Just 0.01 difference. So if he can have a better run, we put him in the gold. Here we go, the split. He's up, 0 0.05 for Montagioni. This is what you needed to be. He's got to be clean to the bottom, kind of pumps into this one. Montagioni off the toe edge here. To the heel, back to the toe. Check the time for Montagioni. Check the time. What's it going to be? Montagioni goes into first place with a 109.41, sitting in the gold medal position with one more rider to go. And that is the final competitor in the men's bank slalom. Chili Jar was leading after the first run, but this man has just stomped a cracking time. Everything about this run was textbook. 
And even when he gets tangled up in those grooves, he stays on that edge like a boss and just cuts through it like a knife through hot butter. Perfect down the step down, right on the transition, keeping the low line, not carrying too much height, and just pumping into everything all the way through and puts up a 109-41 to take over the gold medal spot. Now he has to wait. He's guaranteed silver. Can Ji Li Jia take gold for the People's Republic of China? 54 gates, 21 turns. Stand between him and Paralympic immortality. He launches himself into the course. Look at the rollers. Look how he did the rollers. That's key right there, anticipating those. So solid here, a little high on that edge there. Oji needing to be fast. Needs to be faster than a 109.41. It's only just a quarter of a second from what he put up. So he's got to find the speed line and subtract the time. We'll see. It all comes down to this first split. Is he in touch? Here's the split. And he is back. 0.48. He's going to be absolutely perfect if he wants to get gold. Is it going to be silver? Is it going to be gold for Xi? This is it. On the toes. Good turn there, anticipating to the heels. The final turn and the approach to the rollers. Here's Xi. Can he do it? Will it be silver? Will it be gold? And it's the silver medal for Xi. And that means Montagioni, Maxime Montagioni will grab the gold. Xi will grab the silver, and Zhu Yanggang will grab the bronze. He knows he's taken gold. He was in spectacular form coming into the Paralympic Winter Games. Maxime Montagioni of France, the Paralympic champion, but Ji Li Jia did everything possible to try and take back top space. That was it though, that high line. We, we talk about the high line. You need to be in that middle section to keep that speed. And I think where G went wrong is that top section, he just went a little too high. I mean, you look at the competitors, a 109.41 to a 110.16 for set for silver and a 110.14. It is so close between those three times. Confirmation of those final standings. The Paralympic champion is Maxime Montagioni of France. Ahead of a Chinese one, uh, two, three, four. So Ji Li Jia taking the silver medal. Zhu Yong Gang in the bronze medal position. So we stand by for the recognition ceremony for the men's bank slalom SBUL.
Well, here they are, Zhu Yang Gang, a second bronze in these games. Xi Lajia, a silver and a gold these games. And Maxime Montagioni is the golden boy. Just 19 years old, Zhu Yongyang has been training for this moment for five years. He's a bronze medalist at the Paralympic Winter Games. Well, what a competitor this 19-year-old is. His second Paralympic medal. And what a future he has in the sport. of emotions for the Frenchman, the men's bank slalom SB UL Paralympic champion. A turmoil of thoughts and emotions. He's holding back those tears. But I think when the medal is placed around his neck, he'll be able to let go. What a performance from Maxime Montagioni. to the final run in the men's banked slalom, SBLL1. And we have a start list showing us Tommy Tuskinen will be the first to take a second run. Wu Zhongwei with the fastest time, 111.92, sitting in the gold medal position ahead of Chris Voss in silver. A Dutchman just ahead of Noah Elliott of the United States, who's currently in the bronze medal position. Two runs in the competition in Beijing 2022. Fastest wins. LL1 category is for those athletes with lower limb impairment. And we have the Team Unicorn 
on the snowboards of Tommy Taskinen. He is ready to complete his Paralympic Winter Games experience. Now, is that his coach that is talking to him from the start? Tommy Taskadin. He's got a booming voice. It's carrying <laughs> down the course. It <laughs> sure does. Good effort. It's Paralympic debut. He's competed in a couple bank slums before. Finland in 2019. Had a 10th place out there. Lillehammer earlier in the season, 11th for him there. And before Paris snowboarding, he competed in big air snowboarding back in 2009, the World Cup. The unicorn on the snowboards. Uh, we talk about Team Unicorn. It's a, an international troop of snowboarders. Oh, he just lost an edge there. That is his run over. Yeah, and when that happens, the situation, when you miss a gate, that can't be a timed run. So Tommy Taskinen is 149.32, will be the one that he will keep with. But Unicorns the, never die, but they will be back. They will be back. And the philosophy, he says, never give up. So he is going to ride down, get a few slashes on the side. Let's see what went wrong. Okay, so he comes down. Lands right on the knuckle, and then he just gets to the back seat there and gets on that heel edge and then takes out that gate. So he will get a DNF for run number two. And the arms in the air like you just don't care. Tommy Taskadin, 149-32. Brazil's Andre Barbieri. <laughs> setting a time of 143.86 in his first run, the 40-year-old. He's also competed in para triathlon, so is an all-round athlete and looking to carve out some success on the course. Uh, yeah, par, para athletics and then also para surfing as well. He's been now doing that in the course surfing in Brazil. Very strong sport. He now calls home Santa Barbara, California. He lives with his family there and he does a lot of surfing in the off time. Rieri here, good turn, throwing some slashes. You can definitely see that surf style in Andre Barbieri. The Brazilian tornado coming all the way down here. Good carve line there on the toes. And look at this time for him. He's going to smash the time that he had earlier. <laughs> he just gets in the back seat, butters it across the line. And that's a 122.18. That is an improvement, my friend. Mahita Papara of Romania. With the flag on the front, on the nose of his board. And again, looking for a personal best of time of 124.29. In the first run down the course at Jan Jaco. Mahita, 40, 42 years old. 124.29, so looking, see if he can beat that. Hey, airs that one out. It's a little pre-jump on that. The two-time Paralympian on course. Took the Paris snowboarding back in 2007. Oh. Taking the scenic routes. A little skate style there. Driving it towards the bottom. Right there, solid off the toes. Little pump section through that. And he's going to keep run number one, the 124 2 9. And the Hada. Next up, Tyler Burdick of the United States of America. Wife Megan and his daughter back home. 
will be cheering him on. Already deep into the course. Slight little hand touch. Picking up some loose change, we call that. Tyler Burdick on course now, 40 years old, out of Salt Lake City. And he's looking to beat his time of that 123.53. Let's see what he can do here. Work some magic towards the bottom. The American Tyler Burdick, the two time Paralympian, eighth Sochi in 2014. And snowboarding made its debut on the Paralympic stage. And trying to beat that time. Can he do it? He does. A better run at run number two for USA's Tyler Burdick. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think that was directed to us. <laughs> Rene Eckhart of Austria launches himself into competition. So wakeboarder as well, enjoys climbing, tennis, cycling, hand cycling, another all-round athlete, as so many of our Paralympians are. Ray Eckhart, 122.12, has him in 12th spot for the Austrian. Paralympic debut for a 34-year-old. And here we go. Can he beat the time? And he will do that. 128-2, double shockers. Hello, Kanatal. Hello, Austria. It's such a Hawaiian Ooh, thing. So nice here. But love seeing him do that with double shockers at the end. <laughs> Team Germany back on course. We have our industrial. Mechanic. Christian Schmeit. 11th in Beijing in snowboard cross. The 33 year old started riding at 12. Remember that rad dad club? His partner Nadine and son Max. Hey, that looks good, Schmeit. 11 3 4 back. Let's see what he can do with his 120 36. And speed up this lower section. And he's going to be off that time. And a great showing for Christian Schmeit from Germany. He'll keep run number one. That'll be his fastest. The 123.6. Proud Paralympian. Okay. To the top of the course. Liu Yang. Liu Yi Yang of uh, China, 21 years old. Into the course with a cheer of Jai Mo. Put some heat on it, is how that translates from the Chinese. Some, some spicy chili sauce. That's what put some heat on it right there for him. That's what he's looking to do. 116.80. Has him in the tenth spot. I'm trying to improve on that. And draw on those lines. Putting the pen to paper. Getting a little bit later in the day, the snow will start hardening up a little bit as well. That could help the, the speed of the course, but you can see there's a lot of slough out there. What we call slough that loose snow. Clean on the step down. Two seconds back. That's a good toe edge turn. Just staying in it like a solid Euro card. Really good off that toe edge. And here we go, run number two, and that is going to be a better run for him. 115.08, seventh place. 
That's an improvement. See him nice and low there. Then gets a little high onto that turn. And you're dealing with you know, 20 total banks to deal with. So to be perfect on every single bank is very tough to do. To Japan, Kosuda Yunta. In the number eight bid. Finished in the top ten in the snowball cross here. And we'll be looking to beat his time. He's going for a personal best. Oh, we're going a bit high on that bank. He was having a little word with himself on that, trying to tell himself, keep it calm. Pursuit ah! of 116.32. Has him currently ranked in 10th. See where he goes here. How far back is he? 49.63. Yeah. And he's going to miss that gate. That's going to be a DNF. It didn't work out in his favor on that one, but the 116.32, that is a solid showing. Only about five seconds off the best time, and he'll stay in 10th. We'll and see if that holds up. Well, the, the old saying goes, you miss a beat, lose the rhythm. And I think that's what happened to him. Lost the rhythm of that run. And it's such a rhythm when it comes down to bank after bank. And then hits that gate, does the front edge tumble, which is never good. But glad he is okay. Makes his way down. So DNF run number two, 116.32, top 10 right now. Croatia's Bruno Bosniak stands poised to start the clock on his final round at the Paralympic Winter Games of Beijing 2022. Competed in para wheelchair rugby in 2013. That's a brutal sport. And uh, says he likes to stay in the moment when he's riding the course like this. Once again, notice that he has the hard boots on. So he, those are ski style boots that he's wearing. And, his, and you can see how his foot placement, his stance is. That's in a more of a PGS style. So there's, there's two ways you can go about it. You can go with the soft boot, more of a freestyle. But Bruno Bajnak choosing to go with the Parallel Giant Slalom setup, the race board with the hard boots. And you can see how elevated those boots are off the top sheet of that board. And he's going to get right to the perfect transition. It does, it's really tough on the jumps with that. And it's a little tough to make that board work in the bank slalom condition because you have transitions you're working at. You can parallel giant slalom, you have a flat course. He's trying to beat the 115.78. Can he do it? Trying to get that personal best, and he is going to come across. Yes, an improvement, 115.68 for Barsniak. You can see that with the stance right there, and your, your feet are both angled in a forward position. This is very traditional on a parallel giant slalom setup. So 115.68 for the Croatian. Oguri Daichi of Japan. Just passionate about snowboarding. 
received the Para Sports Excellence Awards in Japan four years ago. Lives and breathes out on the slopes. I think that is a BioDAP product from Schultz. Yes, he did say, hey, Michael, at the top before he dropped in. And you can see he goes with the soft boots. Now, this is where we're talking about the difference between Bajnak's setup and Oguri's setup. You can see both those feet are not put both directed forward. You have that back foot that's kind of straight out, your back boot, and then you kind of tilt that front one forward a little bit. But that's the soft boots compared to the PGS setup that Bosniak was rocking. Oguri, the tail tap on the knuckle. He's carving his way down. Aguri trying to beat a 115.55. That was his first one. Turn and burn. Good turn there. Can he get his personal best here? 114.42. Aguri in the seventh. That's a better run. 2.5 back. Well, when you've got a prosthetic that that's pr is as pretty as that, you want it on show, and you can really see how the shock absorbers dig in and work as the... Paralympians digging in and carving out the edges as well. It's just a beautiful piece of engineering. That was a nice tail tap there. Yeah, they use a mountain bike shock. This is what Schultz has put together in his company, BioDap, to make these prosthetics with 26 riders representing what Schultz has put together. You'd think he'd keep them for himself and improve <laughs> his own chances in the LL2 category. He is yet to come. We're still with the LL1 category, and this is Tyler Turner. He fancies a place on the podium. What can he do? Pumping through this top roller section for Tyler Turner. Now remember, he is fresh off a of gold and snowboard cross. So he knows that you need to have the need for speed. And that's what he's looking for. Tyler Turner down in sixth place, a 114 even to get into a top three. Needs a 113.06. Better than that, he'd be sitting in bronze. Better than a 112.08, he'd be sitting in silver. And better than a 111.92, Tyler Turner would find himself sitting in an opportunity to get a second gold at these Paralympic Winter Games. Drawing the lines, staying low. 0.39 back. That's not too far back. That could challenge the top three if he's clean. Will there be another medal for this man right here on course? Canada's Tyler Turner. A 114 has him in six. Outside looking in. Can Tyler Turner do it? Here we go. Tyler Turner crossed the finish line. He moves into the bronze medal situation with a 112.84 for Canada's Tyler Turner. All right. All right. What's up, everybody? I think you've just moved into the bronze medal positions at the Paralympic Winter Games. That's what's up. And even though he took a little bit of a high line on some of those and got just a little heel heavy on that step down. Let's go! <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Let's go! Hi, Mom. Woo! He's sitting in the box seats. Now, Mike Schultz, we've just been speaking about the technological advances that he's been making in prosthesis for para sports. Let's see what he's going to produce from his own, with his own skills. Really pumping through those rollers at the top, setting himself up for as much speed as possible down this banked slalom course. I love what he's rolling with, that, that kit, that red, anodized red prosthetic, matching the board, looking solid, color coordinated with the helmet. And Mike Schultz finished silver for Tyler Turner in snowboard cross. Could they go one, two out here today? We'll check the split time as Schultz, silver medalist from snowboard cross. With a high line through that, he's trying to beat Tyler Turner, Wu Zhang Wei sitting in gold, 
Chris Voss, the boss, sitting in silver. Tyler Turner, bronze. Ken Schultz knock Tyler Turner off a podium. Schultz towards the bottom for Team USA, the 40-year-old. Drawing a good line there. Mike Schultz, can he do it? I think he's going to be outside, fourth place. Mike Schultz, fourth place. Tyler Turner in third. Chris Voss sitting in silver. Wu Zhangwei sitting in gold. Well, it's the Krulik's place, fourth position at this point, just off the podium. No doubting the effort from Mike Schultz as he tackled the course. 0.05 slower than Tyler Turner, who's sitting in a bronze medal position. If we turn our eyes to Liu Kaiyang of China. Twenty-two years old. Drops in. Full of intent. Riding goofy. A good start to this, the way he anticipates the rollers, how he kind of pumps through those rollers and uses that to his advantage. Tenth in snowboard cross, 22-year-old in his Paralympic debut. So he's sitting with a 113.29. Tyler Turner in the bronze with a 112.84. Well, that's what he's looking to do right there. Drawing very nice lines through the sections. Tiny bit of chatter there, losing a little bit of speed. Let's see where he's at. 0 0.80 back. That's not too far. Chris Voss and Tyler Turner might be getting a little nervous right about now. Here's Liu. Final turn off the toes. Nice pump off that one. That might have just helped his cause. In the sixth place. Gave it a good effort. Had Was in touch, but lost some time down at the lower section. A little high right there in that upper section. Solid through the rollers, but just could not put it together. And you can see kind of a high line there. Once again, we, we talk about this course. We talk about the, the battering this course has been taking with all these riders in these warm conditions. Noah Elliott of the United States. He knows what it takes to be a Paralympic champion. What has he got on his final run in Beijing 2022? Good start so far for Noah Elliott from USA. For the Colorado Springs, the 24-year-old. Couple of medals so far, both in Pyeongchang. Gold in bank slalom, defending gold medalist. A much different course there than this one. This really allows you to just carve through this. Each turn kind of mimics the other turn where you didn't see that in Pyeongchang. It was a completely different course, a much better course. Got to give it up to Canadian Steve Morrison, the course designer. But the lower you get in the elevation, the softer the snow gets, the thicker the snow gets. So 0.41 back. Can he make up the difference? It's going to be tough in these conditions. Noah Elliott in fifth. Needs to beat a 112.84 to get into a bronze medal. Noah Elliott for the USA, off the heel. Here's Noah Elliott pumping through the rollers, crossing the line into fourth place. A 112.87, a better run, but not enough to get in the top three. And Tyler Turner dodged one like that right there. Elliott working really hard on those banks, carving in the turns, but the speed just not coming. Close. That was solid there. That was great on the step down. But what this also means 
is by this happening, Tyler Turner will be the bronze medalist. So Tyler Turner will grab a bronze, and that means Tyler Turner grabs gold in snowboard cross. And then he comes out and grabs bronze out here in bank slalom for the Canadian. It also means that this man can do no worse than finish in the silver medal position. Chris Voss of the Netherlands. 24 years old. Passionate about snowboarding. Promoting the sports with every fiber of his being. He launches himself in the chase for top step of the podium at Beijing 2022. Guaranteed silver medal, Chris Voss, but he's going for gold. Well, they call him the boss. And when you call, when you have a nickname, when you're called the boss, silver medal is not what you're looking for. And I'll tell you right now, with Chris Voss, he wants one medal. And that medal needs to be gold in far as his eyes. He'll take the silver, but he wants the gold. Let's see if he can be clean enough down through the bottom section to claim that. Silver and Peyang Chang in snowboard cross. So he's had the taste of a medal before, but he has not had the taste of a gold medal. But if he's going to get the gold today, he's going to need to be faster than a 111.92. Wu Zhangwei has that top time. And he's up on it. 0.26. Can the boss put this one together and go into the number one spot? He's going to have to be perfect. This is where the snow gets soft. This is where there's a lot of extra slough. The boss, here we go, Chris Voss. Silver and Peyong Chang. Here's Chris Voss. Chris Voss stays in second place, 112.06. That means that Wu Zhangwei will get the gold, Chris Voss will get the silver, and Tyler Turner will grab the bronze. Oh, that frustration says it all there. So close for Chris Voss. And he attacked the course and from it, the top. It goes back to what we were saying. The bottom part of the course, it's soft. There's more slough. He was up on the top time, but he lost time in the bottom section. We're looking at the gold medalist. Silver for Chris Voss of the Netherlands, but it's a victory lap for the gold medalist in the men's bank slalom SBLL1, Wu Zhongwei. It's not about the time for him. He's guaranteed gold, but you can guarantee he's still going to be attacking all the way down. The 540 meters, 21 turns, 54 gates on the Genting Snow Park course. Well, and sometimes when you see riders take their victory lap, they don't give it everything they got. They more have fun. They just kind of do their own thing. But I feel with Wu Zhangwei, he still wants to beat his time. So what does he have to beat? A 111.92 to get his personal best, to leave no doubt about it. So he's already got the gold. The victory lap for Wu Zhangwei. And this will also be his second medal. Got the bronze and snowboard cross. His Paralympic Winter Games. And look at this, 114 up on his own time. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Let's go. Wu Zhangwei. Can he beat his own time? You can only get one medal. It's already gold, but he wants to improve on his time. Here's Wu Zhangwei. Is it better? Look at this, it's better than his first time on a victory lap. He gets a better time of 110.85. Wow, he wanted to leave no doubt about it that I get the gold medal today. Well, Tyler Turner summed it up there. Wow, what a performance. I am your champion. That, so relaxed and casual coming down, and that's that's brought in the speed. That is absolutely amazing. And just smashing it, too. Not smashing it by over a second. And that's not easy to do. And look, he, he lands on the knuckle on the step down, which if he landed that perfect, he might have shaved two seconds off. Wu Zhang Wei. Unbelievable performance. 
China claim another gold medal in the Paris snowboarding. Well, they missed out on the first two classifications, but you knew the hunger was going to kick in, and Wu Zhongwei want to leave no doubt about it that he is gold here today. Let's confirm the final result from the men's bank slalom, SB11, LL1, Wu Zhongwei. The two fastest times in the competition, giving him the gold medal. Chris Voss of the Netherlands in silver and Tyler Turner of Canada in the bronze medal position. What a competition. Well, it's proved quality competition in the men's bank slalom as we wait for the recognition ceremony to get underway. Well, here they are, your bronze medalist, Tyler Turner from Canada, a gold in snowboard cross, a bronze today. Chris Voss from the Netherlands, the boss with a silver, and Wu Zhangwei from the People's Republic of China, snagging the gold and the bronze in snowboard cross. What an amazing day of standing sideways. Well, here's a man who usually likes to take to the skies, learning to fly in a wingsuit currently, but he kept the board on the snow and took the bronze medal. Chris Voss, he also is a man who likes to fly, he's a pilot. Silver medal once again for the Dutchman. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing China. It's a lot for the 26-year-old to take in from the People's Republic of China. Wu Zhongwei, two medals in Beijing 2022. Massive support for the host nation for these Paralympic Winter Games. Appreciation to the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalist. Yu 
女士们、先生们，请向北京二零二二年冬残奥会获奖运动员表示热烈的祝贺。to the final event of the Paris Snowboard competition at Beijing 2022, the Men's Bank Slalom SBLL2. Plenty of riding still to come. Twenty-five make the start list. Running in reverse order. Sunki in the gold medal position. At the end of the first run with Mati Sumahari Hamari in silver. And Ali Hill of Great Britain in the bronze medal position. But we start with Laurent Balisa of France. Didn't finish his first run. Wasn't clear what happened. We'll uh, watch him from the top. Let's hope the Frenchman gets a better run on his final ride at Beijing 2022. Laurent Baglica now on course, 16 in snowboard cross, a 28 year old. We've got the DNF on run number one. So right now, for Laurent, you just want to finish, you want to put a time in. That's what he's looking to do right now. So don't risk it. Just be clean top to bottom. Focus on the task at hand. And that's getting down this course solid. And he's doing that so far. Come a long way. Come out here in your Paralympic debut. Competed in gymnastics. 28-year-old. There's that. That time, the 47.74, that is the split time. Though. We're going to be looking closely at that through all these riders. 25. 10.63 back. The finish line in sight. DNF on run number one. No mistakes here for Laurent. Off the toe to the heel. Through the rollers, he's gonna pump through them and he's gonna cross. He's got a time. 123.84 for the Frenchman. It's not about finishing first for some of these competitors. Bernard Hammerl of Austria drops into the course. 1.38, here's time. So once again, it's all now what you're focused on is that personal best. You want to beat your time. 47.74, 11.73 back of the top split. Looks like he's in reach to get a personal best. Bernhard Hammerl from Austria, the 44-year-old paraglider. And he's going to beat that time, his personal best. 
is right here, a 125-15. That's what you want to do. Bernhard Hamrell, nicely done. Very nice. Hossein Salgani of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Also looking to beat his personal best, the 28-year-old. 23rd after the first run. Very good approach. He's got that what we call the knock need style where the team knees almost come together. Super stylish looking. From Sulgani from Iran. 28 years old. Trying to beat his 134-1. Can he do it? Can this be the personal best he's been shooting for? And he has done it. His personal best, the 129 three run for Hussein Sulgani. Day glow really being picked up by the camera. The light conditions, I think, a little darker on the hill. As Matthias Keller launches and pumps into the course. Matthias Keller now, the 120 16, having the 22nd spot for the 40 year old. 47 7 4. Nice on the step down. 7 2 7 back from the top split. Here's the time from run number one, the 120-16. Will he be able to challenge that one? The three-roller section, the triple roller, he's through. 119.07, tumbles at the end, but that is a personal best. Well worth the tumble. Teammate Manuel Ness from Team Germany. Fledgling nation in the para snowboard community, but looking to make progress and path the way perhaps for more athletes to join the team. And Ness here down the step down, 6.72 back for Ness. Ness is trying to beat a 119.73. On the line, you can see the edge work. And he's going to come across. And that's going to be improvement for Ness as well. 119.15. And it is a lot of work going through that many banks. I'll tell you what. Here's Andy McLeod of Great Britain. at his first Paralympic Winter Games. And has adapted the Cool Runnings tune, turned it to his own advantage, says, feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on up, it's snowboard time. Uh, that was awesome. Andy McLeod, Paralympic debut. Love the quote, mountain bike rider. 118.52 is the top time that we've seen McLeod trying to beat that time. Hey, there's the personal best for Andy McLeod, 19 spot with a 116.55. Smashed it. Wojciech Taraba of Poland. His time's coming down in leaps and bounds. Spectacular treadlocks <laughs> trailing along behind him. Well, that's a the hair for the flare, we call that. You don't want to get that caught on one of those gates. Some nice good lines, good good toe, good heel work there. High lining through that. Taraba looking to beat a 11709. That was his time on run number one. That's what he's trying to beat. 
Going to pop through the triple roller section, and he will do it. 115-18, 18th place. Aced it. The hair's probably uniform. Uh, he is a snowboard instructor at the 2020 Adaptive Snow Camp in Poland. Probably obligatory. We have Korea's Lee ji Yuk. His philosophy is, uh, even if you have a second go, try and get better. Do your best at the first attempt. I suspect he'll still be trying to be better on his second attempt. Well, there you go. That's what you want to do. You want to be better at that second attempt. He's only 3.79 back. So Lee looking to beat a 115.83. That's what he put down. And him ranked in the 18th spot. He's now been bumped into the 19th spot. So he'd like to jump up. Let's see what he can do here. There is the time, 115.83. He's giving it everything he's got, and he's going to cross line 114.39 into 16th place. And every little spot counts. Every rider who's come down on their second run so far has improved their time. Let's see how Tabuchi Shinji of Japan can do. 114.882. The time to beat. Tabuchi here. Airs that out. Lands perfectly on that. 391 back. Tabuchi looking to get better than that. 114.82. Good low line through that bank. Tabuchi on the toe, straighten out, flatten out, pump. And a 114.57, a slight improvement. Nicely done, Tabuchi Shinji from Japan. Now, is that a cat or a mouse, do you think? I'm thinking cat. I'm thinking cat. Cat-like reflexes out there for Tabuchi. Good work. Liu Zheng Liang of China. 17th after his first run. Put up a 114.49. Let's see how far back is. I love that, pointing the, pointing the nose down to try and keep that speed. Five, five seconds and some change back. One fourteen forty nine. that's what he's trying to beat. It's gonna be close. Can he do it? I don't think he's going to get better. He's going to keep that run one. And that's going to be the, the time that he keeps, the 114.49. He yipping. So many of these Chinese athletes, these Chinese riders making their debut in front of the home crowd in Beijing, and they have impressed the international community. Oh, indeed they have. Their riding skills have really been shown out here at these Beijing Paralympic Winter Games. And Xi Jinping, from the People's Republic of China, the 21-year-old, took up para snowboarding in 2017. His ambition was to compete and let's see what he does here. He improves 113.50 in the 14th. Zach Miller of the USA. He is launching himself in. He's definitely looking to chase that clock down. 114.17, the time to beat. Let's see what the Zach attack can do here. Zach Miller, the 23-year-old, 11th in snowboard cross at these Paralympic Winter Games. His Paralympic debut now. Zach trying to beat his 114-17. Drawing the lines like an artist here. Zach Miller, can he beat it? The time across. 114.11, an improvement for Zach Miller. So his personal best with two opportunities. Thank you, China. It's been amazing. 
Nakamoto Kaiji. 113-38. Oh, look at that. That's really, really pretty right there. The way he draws that line. The board will follow. Okamoto, let's see how far back he is. Points it. Big surf style there. 3.3 back. Okamoto. 113-38. He wants to beat that. The one thing he has is style for miles. Okamoto. He's going to be off that time, 113.38. He'll keep that as he reverts in the flat. Okamoto Kaiji from Japan. But I'll tell you what, he has some real good style. So China's Yen Wendy, Yan Wendy. Riding Goofy down the course. That right foot forward. And here we go, Jan Wendy, Paralympic debut for him. Again, para snowboarding 2016. Trying to beat his 112 2 0. Let's see if he can get in touch for his personal best here. Jan Wendy, the triple roller set, and just outside of 112 2 0 for Jan Wendy with his Paralympic debut. Time for a rest. Mateus Menendez Garcia of France. It sounds a little windy at the top of the course. See the bibs really fluttering now. The microphone's picking up the sound of the breeze. MMG. Mateus Menendez Garcia from France. Paralympic debut for him. 14th in snowboard cross. The 29-year-old looking to be the 112 19 That's the time that he had. Trying to get his personal best here today. Nice attack there. Just attacking this course to try and get that personal best. Looks like he's going to be outside of it. But another one with great French style as Mateus Mendez Garcia will finish. He'll keep the 112 19 and remain in the 11th spot right now. Heading into the top 10. Australia's Ben Tudhope. Co-captain of the Australian delegation in Beijing 2022. He's won Australia's only snowboard medal at the games. And that's because he's the only para snowboarder here. He's been on his own in the village at John Jan Jakal. The rest of the team in the athletes village but uh, he is part of this team unicorn this international collection of riders along with Mati Suhamari and Alex Massey and they are a great bunch of supporters for each other as we see him really tucking in on these edges yeah, good work out of the three-time Paralympian remember competing in Sochi at just a tender age of 14 years old he was there from the beginning, so he's competed in all para snowboard events, this being the third edition of it. And let's see what he can do. 168. Remember, he's also bronze in snowboard cross. So Tud Hope trying to get out of that 10 spot. A 11202 is what he had. Drawing some serious lines here. Look at the heel work. Off to the nose, just cutting lines in it, carving it like a stake. Here's Tud Hope. Going to come across. He's going to get his personal best. Ninth place for Ben Tudhope. It's when you see shots like that, that you really see how having a surfing attitude can really help in this sport. Oh, and that right there. Where he goes down that step down, points the nose down, so he lands perfect. Hey, Steve up. Love you, thank you. Australia, you. That was great. 
Ichikawa, Takahito. Oh, sorry, it is Zhu Jiang. I'm getting ahead of myself. Number 42 bib, 111.73. Enough best for ninth quickest in the first run for this 32-year-old rider from the People's Republic of China. And a former member of the powerlifting team of Mongolia. The granddaddy of the Chinese delegation in the Paris snowboarding. Oh, and he goes wide. Yep, goes outside that bank. And that's going to be tough to beat his 111.73, which was very solid. Had him in, in that top 10. Oh, and he gets a little bit on that heel edge. It's great to see the adaption that he made with that back foot. Had to bring it up. And he's really worked it to his advantage, but he hits a gate right there. Yeah, he's it, not sure whether he actually completed the course by going through the gate there, holds his hands up. But at this point, with a 111.73, you're not going to beat that. There's no need to go back up to the gate because you're not going to beat that time. So for him, just come on down and be very happy with a top 10 if that holds up. That 111.73 is quite respectable for Zhu Jiang. Styling it out down the course. Yeah, he's just going to go snowboarding now. I like it. Just some turns, standing sideways, having a good time on a snowboard. Privileged access, millionaire snowboarding right there. Nobody, not many people have been on that snow over the last few weeks. See, we talk about that high line. When you go too high, sometimes you can just get pushed out of the bank. So that's why keeping it in the middle of the bank around each turn is key. Now we have the bib of number 47, Ichikawa Takahito, composing himself at the start gate. Nervous. I think the nerves maybe have gone a little. The first run has been completed. Strapping in, he's ready for the ride. Off and underway, over the rollers, generating as much in, uh, in, in power to get him a little bit more speed through this top section of the course. Well, he used the rollers to advantage once again. When you see them preload and kind of pre-jump that roller, that's to keep the speed going. You actually create a little bit more downhill momentum. So Ichikawa using that to his advantage as he gets down here, carving the banks, stay low. Ichikawa looking at a 111.31, has him in eight. To get up in the top three right now, you would need better than a 110.45 is what you're looking at. And Ollie Hill from Great Britain is in the bronze medal situation. Maddie Serhamari sitting in the silver for Finland. Sung Kui sitting in the gold for People's Republic of China. Airs it out right there for Ichikawa. 2.39 back. Might be out of touch to be able to try and challenge the top three. But now it's about the personal best. Ichikawa, a 111-3-1. That's what he would love to beat. Ichikawa here. Across the triple threat rollers. And then he checks in, 112-35. He's going to keep the 111-3-1. Ichikawa is done for the day. But good, good, solid showing. Paralympic debut. Fifth in snowboard cross. And right now, eighth out here today. Looks how he just preloads that. Yeah, nicely done. Puts that one down. Very solid. Ichikawa Takehito. <laughs> so we move to just inside the 111 time. Set by Keith Gable of the USA. 110 92 is the time he would very much like to smash. Smooth over the rollers at the top of the course. He 
Steve Cable in seventh. 110.92, as you mentioned, that's the time to get up in the top three. Needs better than a 110.45 for bronze, 109.98 for silver, 109.73 to be gold here today. Keith Gable seventh and snowboard cross. Looking good here. Keith Gable, a little slow there, 47.74, only 149 back. Keith Gable, 110.92, that's his top time. Can Gable challenge it? Got to be clean, it's hard to pick up. It's hard to get rid of time here at the bottom of this course. Here comes Gable through the triple threat rollers. 111.58, keeping the 110.92, seventh place for Gable out of the USA. Well, he worked hard to try and shave some fractions of seconds off that second run, but the times didn't come. Yeah, just tough to really make up time as we have talked about it, even though that is absolutely perfecto on that landing there. It's just, it, there's so much slough at the bottom with the warmer conditions. It's tough to find that line. The man they call Bubs, Alex Massey of Canada. Part of Team Unicorn. And just missed out on a medal earlier in the competition of Beijing 2022. He is desperate to join his unofficial teammates of uh, Matisu Hamari and Ben Tudhope by bringing home a medal from this Paralympic Winter Games. Massey on course now, two-time Paralympian. Made the small final in snowboard cross, ended up in sixth. The 26-year-old loves downhill mountain biking, wake surfer, and a skateboarder. You can see that skate style that he has. So Massey trying to use that to his advantage as well. What's he need to do? He needs to beat a 110-91. That would be his personal best if he could do that. Ollie Hill sitting in bronze with a 110-45. Matty Serhamari sitting in silver with a 109-98. Sun Kui sitting in the goal with a 109.73. The Canadian, Alex Massey, pointing it. What's it gonna be? Massey, a 110.77 improvement, but sixth place for the Canadian, Alex Massey. Yeah, he improves his time, but uh, it's sixth place for Alex Massey of Canada. Just a little too high on those banks from the top section. You could see him because he was throwing the slough off the top. Can I go? I think we'll let him go. <laughs> Evan Strong of the USA. That's the bib number 38 going through some pre-course stretching routines. Got his back to us, he's riding Goofy. He's looking to get a big launch into the course. Get it, buddy. Keeping it smooth. The strong man on course. Now he saved himself for this one, did not compete in snowboard cross. Wanted to focus 100% on the task at hand and that would be bank slalom. A three-time Paralympian, gold, in Sochi in 2014. Silver in Bank Slalom in Pyeongchang. So he knew this could be the strong event that he was looking for. Where is he at right now? Top five, a 110.74. If he could take one second off that, that would put him in contention for a medal. Spraying the camera on there, getting super aggressive. But you don't want to get too high in those banks. Let's see what the split is for Evan Strong for Team USA. The 35-year-old, how far back is he? And he's 175 back. 
That little extra spray, that little extra high line might have cost him a little bobble there on the toe edge. Really gonna have to hold it together. Evan Strong in fifth to get in the medal. Gonna be to 110, 4 5. Not gonna make that happen. And Evan Strong, fifth place. Run number one is gonna be the strongest. Not to be for USA's Evan Strong today, the three time Paralympian. Well, it wasn't to be in the stars for Evan Strong. He shares a pre race ritual with his mum who gives him a call. That right there is what cost him. That little spray where he got up and almost board slid the top of that bank, that cost you some time. You saw it looked really cool spraying the camera, but that took some time. Love you, everyone. See you soon. Yeah, his mum likes to read him his horoscope before a race, sharing a little bit of this magic at the Beijing 2022 with his family. In the start gate, Owen Pick for Great Britain. He's going to finish at least fourth in this banked slalom, SBLL2. Can he book himself a place on the podium? It's down to him. Well, Owen Pick looks really solid through here, but he doesn't need much. He's that 110.64. You look at Ollie Hill, fellow teammate, he's only got a 110.405, so they are very close together. So if Owen Pick is faster in this run, that could be the difference in a medal or not. The only problem for that is it would knock his teammate, Ollie Hill, out of that third spot, but Ollie Hill would be able to answer back because he will be coming up next. So Pick right now, has really got to focus. The split time coming in is going to kind of determine where he's at in this competition. 47.74. How far back is he? He's 1.89 back from the top spot. That might be too much for him to get back. Here we go. And you know Ollie Hill's watching this one. He's coming up next. Oh, a little bobble there. That's probably going to be the one that cost him. He's going to try to get across the line of time, and it's not going to be enough. Fourth place for Owen Pick. A strong attempt, but the 110 6 4 that he got on first run will be the one in fourth place. And taking another look, a little high onto that one. That might have been something that cost him a little bit there. And down towards the bottom, he had just a slight bobble on the toe edge. Here he is down the step down, perfect. Point that nose down, land on the transition. Fourth place for Owen Pick at the Paralympic Winter Games, which means our final three riders know they will be on the podium, but which medals will they be picking up? Ollie Hill, guaranteed bronze. Can he upgrade? There's Pep in his step. What can he do? Ollie Hill going for better than bronze. He's got that in the bag, but silver and gold are up for grabs in the bank slalom, SB LL2. Ollie Hill on course now. This is the time. Want to put it together. Guaranteed a medal. Ooh, a little high line there. That could cost him a little bit of time. You want to keep it low on the banks. The rest of these turns look really good. The moment you start getting high, the moment it starts adding time to your run. What's he looking to be? He's looking to be a 109.98 for the silver, a 109.73 for the gold. Our podium is set. What medals will they take? That is up to the riders at this point now. How far back is he? 0.78. Can he make that up? It's going to be tough here at the bottom to do that. You've got to be perfect. Ollie Hill. Is it going to be a bronze? Is it going to be a silver? Is it going to be a gold? Oh, a little chatter off the heel there. Ollie Hill over the last turn. What's it going to be? Bronze, silver, or gold? It is bronze for Great Britain's Ollie Hill. Oh! Paralympic debut for Ollie Hill. And he will claim the Paralympic medal. Congratulations to Ollie Hill from Great Britain. The 32-year-old will snag the bronze medal. Good job.
Well, here's a man who's only been competing and only been in the team for a year and a half. What's he going to bring in four years' time? He's got the Union Jack ready to celebrate. He's going early. So, what will it be for Mati Suhamari of Finland in the silver medal position of the men's bank slalom at the Paralympic Winter Games? Is it his destiny to stay with silver or grab the gold? What's going through his mind at the start of this course? He's just over a minute away from his destiny in the bank slalom SBLL2. Matisu Hamari of Finland going for gold. Well, here we go. The sledgehammer on course. Highline in that upper bank, a three-time Paralympic medalist. He has two golds in competition and one bronze. Right now, he's sitting in the silver. A 109.98 is the time he put in. He needs to beat a 109.73. That is the time he definitely can beat. Matty Sirhamari, the three-time Paralympian. The split time coming up. Is it within reach? Here we go. And he is back by one second. It's going to be tough. It might already just be the silver for Matty Sirhamari. But you can't give up. you got to go full throttle. Matty Sirhamari, the Finnish snowboarder, 35 years old, three-time Paralympic medalist. What can he do here? 109.98, he's trying to beat it. And he's not going to do it. He's going to claim the silver medal for Matty Sirhamari, and that will be his fourth Paralympic Games winter medal right there. Gold in snowboard cross, and now silver in bank slalom for Matty Sirhamari. Oh, it's just oh. been scintillating snowboarding oh. on the snow at the Genting Snow Park. All these races have gone the full distance. If you'd had to buy a ticket, you'd have got your money's worth. And that is absolutely perfect on that one. I think what cost Maddie the extra time was just a little bit of a Ooh. high line up top. Run number one, the 109.98. He was a, almost just a second, just about a second slower on that one. Peak from the unicorn, just on his board there. But we are looking at the gold medalist in the men's bank slalom. He did all he needed to do in the first run of this course. It's a victory lap for Sun Ki of China. Ooh, look at the low line he takes. That is the key. That is why he is in the number one spot. The low lines that he takes on those banks, he doesn't get too high. A little high there, but dives down low. He's been looking so solid. Oh, a little bobble there. But it's the victory lap. So it doesn't even matter, no matter what he does here, that 109.73 will get him the gold. You know he would like to improve on it. But there is a lot of slough that has built up throughout the day. This course has take a, taken a battering today. The warmer conditions, and you can see the grooves after every single bank. You look at the lines that have developed. How far back is he of his time? Hey, 0.65, not too bad. So could he have the two fastest times? Well, he'll need to be perfect here. He's already got the goal. This is the victory lap for Sun Kui. This will be his first ever Paralympic Winter Games medal. Sung Chi, here we go. Congratulations. It is gold for Sun Kui for the People's Republic of China. There's such respect between the snowboarders, the community celebrates success and excellent wherever they see it. And this man was a deserved champion. Well, 
Well, you just look at it. Rode so well today. Sung Kui is gold. The final event in the Paris Snowboard Competition at Beijing 2020. Confirmation of the result of the men's bank slalom SBLL2. Sunki of China takes the gold ahead of Mati Suhamari of Finland with Great Britain's Ollie Hill in the bronze medal position. Well, here they are, the Paralympic medalist, bronze for Ollie Hill, his first Paralympic Winter Games medal, silver for Matty Sirhamari, his fourth Paralympic Winter Games medal, and the first Paralympic medal for Sun Kui in its gold from the People's Republic of China. There's pride oozing from every pore there. Ollie Hill of Great Britain gets his need for speed from snowboarding now. A former superbike racer in the United Kingdom has only been in the British scene for a year and a half. And there he is, bronze medalist at the Paralympic Winter Games. Behold the sledgehammer, Mati Suhamari, with his snowboard and his unicorn, part of the team unicorn, a very proud Finn. Well, the joy is absolutely apparent there. Sun Chi 
one of just four Chinese para snowboarders in 2018, led the way for what's been a revolution in the para snowboard community, the host nation dominating on the slopes of Jianjiko. All that at the age of 22. And I think it's time to go and rest and recuperate. And maybe just a little bit of celebration ahead of the medal ceremony to follow. And the mascot, Shri Ron Ron. Almost as precious as the medals themselves. Hey! Oh, my face was backwards. It's all front now. Jubilation on the slopes of Jan Jiko, which has played host to a simply stunning para snowboarding competition at the Paralympic Winter Games. Well, it's the third time that the Paralympics have had snowboarding in the Paralympic Winter Games. And I'll tell you what, this has been the best course in the history of the Paralympic Winter Games. Looking forward to the next one. Well, the banked slalom snowboard medals have been claimed, and that means that Beijing 2022's para snowboard competition is complete. It's been an historic competition for the baby of the Paralympics and the changing of the guard in Paris snowboard, a snowboard competition that's been dominated traditionally by the USA. China, though, topping the table, nine medals in total, and it has been sensational. Paris snowboarding will return four years from now at the Paralympic Winter Games of Milano, Cortina.